Happy hump day, you beauties. Welcome to it. My name is Graham Richards, and yes, you have landed on the soft, warm pillow that is your feel-good breakfast show. We got you. We're going to ease you into the second half of the week. Thank you so much for joining us for the next three hours. We cannot wait to sink our teeth into this. I'm going to say a word you probably know, the trend, fakeaways. When you can create your favorite takeaways in the comfort of your own home. That's our theme for our culinary hotline today, because it is the culinary hotline. Bling! That's the sound I love on a Wednesday morning. And of course, we want your input, so please keep those questions and comments coming throughout this morning. We're going to have a lot of uh, fun in our kitchen this morning. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of a social media handle explosion on the show. Of course, Gangster, I want you to take a look at that. And we'll give you a little bit of background into our amazing chef that's going to be joining us on this culinary journey this morning. But first, let's connect with the rest of our amazing team. You seem up for this culinary Wednesday, my friend to ease into the second half of the week. Good morning, Carl. I love that shirt, bro. Thank you. I've earned my stripes, I'm just saying. That's the vibe, I am. Uh, but welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast show. Today, as Graham mentioned, fakeaways. But now we get to dream a bit. And I want you to do this, and this is on social media. So 063-408-8863. I would love to know if you could create your own fakeaway outlet, your takeaway outlet. Like, what would it be called? Like, I want you to dream. You know, personally, if I think about it, I'd probably have a place which would be called the Carl Chef. It would be fantastic. And then there'll be two menus, a comfort menu and then the healthy menu. Now, the healthy menu will be called Watching Your Wasty Line. It's going to be great. I'm going to be rich. I'm not going to be here for too long, so just, you know, take, take it in. But 063-408-8863, get creative, dream with us, and a little later we'll show you how some of the best fakeaways will be made on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, so make sure you stick around for that. Grab yourself something to drink, perhaps a little beverage, and get ready for the news from around the world. Zoe is standing by. Thank you, Wasty. Well, let's start off with some local news. The Free State Premier Mkolisi Dukwana says one billion rand has been allocated to roads authorities to enable them to expedite the maintenance and construction of roads in the province. Delivering his maiden State of the Province address in Bloemfontein, Dukwana said good road infrastructure was the backbone of any provincial economy. He mentioned that the deteriorating state of the Free State's road infrastructure was a major stumbling block for the economic development and added that it was imperative that the ways and means in which road service delivery happens is changed. And staying with our local news, Finance Minister Enoch Gorongwana is now a member of the National Assembly. He replaces the ANC MP Mike Basopu, who was a member of Parliament's Communications Committee. Gorongwana was the only cabinet minister who wasn't an MP. This as the Constitution allows the President to appoint no more than two ministers who are not members of the National Assembly to his cabinet. Gurungwana's becoming an MP is reportedly a move to make place for the appointment of a Minister of Electricity. Now moving to news abroad, provincial results from Nigeria's presidential election show that Bola Tinubu of the ruling party in closing in, closing in on victory. With only five states left to declare, Tinubu of the all-progressive Congress party, the APC, was ahead with some 7.5 7 million valid votes counted, making it highly likely that he will be declared the winner of the election to replace outgoing President Muhammadu Buhari. But opposition parties have rejected the results as a flawed process, which suffered multiple technical difficulties due to new technology introduced by the National Electoral Commission. And staying with news abroad, China says America is politicizing efforts to find the origin of the coronavirus. It says America's claim that the virus originated in the Chinese laboratory is an attempt to slander China. This follows reports that American scientists have found that the virus properly came from, probably rather, came from a laboratory in China, although it wasn't intentional. The World Health Organization says it will continue to investigate into the origin of the virus. And the U.S. envoy to China has called on the country to be more honest about the origins of the virus. 
And a boy with autism who was speechless, he couldn't read nor write until his late teens, is now the youngest ever black professor at London's world-famous Cambridge University. As a child, Jason Arde grew up in a disadvantaged part of Clapham, London, and was diagnosed with global developmental delay, which affected his ability to learn how to talk and read. Therapists even predicted he could spend his adult life requiring lifelong support. Arde finally learned to read and write in his late teens and became a physical education teacher after studying at England's Surrey University and he wanted to study and learn more. He studied by night while working as a PE teacher by day, eventually becoming an acclaimed professor with two master's degrees and a PhD in educational studies from Liverpool's John Moores University. On Monday, he will join five other black professors at Cambridge and be hopes and the hopes to inspire people from underrepresented backgrounds to pursue higher education. Well, on that note, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take a first look at your sport with Graham. Let's kick it off with cricket news this morning as we start our sporting bulletin in South Africa. We're pegged back by a revitalised West Indian pace attack in their final session to eventually reach a 314 for 8 at the close of play. And that's on the first day of that first test playing out in Centurion. So the Proteas are reaching 206 for 1 at T. Then a runout uh, began a bit of a collapse, uh, which uh, seven wickets fell for just 93 runs over that period. Then Aidan Markham was uh, the mainstay of the South African inning, scoring a brilliant century before being bowled out by Izari Joseph for 115. And Joseph was definitely the pick of the bowlers, taking three wickets in his stand. Then on to footballing news, and this one could have shockwaves, and we hope a very speedy resolution. French prosecutors have opened a preliminary investigation into an alleged rape by Morocco defender Ashraf Hakimi. Now, a source close to the investigation has now confirmed this. And a 24-year-old woman has accused the Paris Saint-Germain fullback of raping her at his home in the French capital on the 25th of February. The source said the woman reported the incident at a police station this past Sunday but did not file charges. The public prosecutor's office is now handling the case in Nanterre in the western suburbs of Paris. And they declined to comment but confirmed that an investigation had indeed begun. Then we turn to rugby. Rugby uh, Sevens or SA Rugby Sevens A squad members, Nuk Hayward and Gershwin, were will be joining the Springbok Sevens team in Vancouver and will make their Seven Series debuts on the weekend at the Canada Sevens. Congratulations, lads. The duo linked up with their fellow Blitzbox and will replace Jaden Barron and Masanda Mashali, both of whom have sadly been ruled out due to concussion. Then Travis Ishmael, who made his Blitzbox debut in Los Angeles last weekend, was also ruled out of the Vancouver tournament with a hamstring injury. His replacement will be announced as soon as possible. And moving on to the latest on the tennis front, uh, Rafa Nadal has now withdrawn from the Masters 1000 event starting next week in Indian Wells because of injury. The Spaniard has not competed since losing in the second round of the Australian Open last month. And the 22-time uh, Grand Slam champion was expected to be out for at least uh, six to eight weeks with a hip injury that then hampered his uh, defeat by Mackenzie MacDonald. Well, Nadal won at the California event in 2007, 2009 and 2013 and lost in last year's final to American Taylor Fritz. But he will sorely be missed. And that's where we leave our sport for this hour at least. It's a brand new day. Let's see what the weather has in store with Carl. Thanks a lot, G. Now let's take a look at the weather news first. Now, Nelson Mandela Bay Metro has issued a boil before drink notice to its water consumers as it's introducing borehole sourced water into the reticulation system. The Metro says it's unable to meet the water quality standard uh, blending ratio set out for blending water from multiple sources due to the low levels of the supply dams affecting abstraction rates and reservoir levels. Mayor Ratif Udendal uh, said this was a precautionary measure and they've instructed public health officials to increase the daily testing of water and advising residents to boil tap water before consuming it. With the addition of unblended water in the articulation system, the water quality is constantly changing. 
Meanwhile, the Gauteng Health Department yesterday said tap water remains safe for drinking. Its message follows a viral audio clip making rounds on social media, discouraging people from drinking tap water. Allegedly, it is uh, contaminated and may cause cholera. Department spokesperson uh, Mutalele Modeba uh, said the audio clip was misleading and untrue. Now, from water quality to the quality of your sunrises, it is absolutely sensational. We kickstart this with Emil Jones uh, out in Baklu, capturing a lovely early morning view of the sky lighting up between the trees. Uh, we've got uh, Yuria from Paul uh, snapping this shot, the sun peeking over his home before heading out. And then Zanika sharing this shot from Kenville with orange hues glimmering up over the town. And last up, we had Rebetswe, uh, who showcased a pretty sunrise view in Valkom before she heads out to work for the day. It's looking good, and it can even look even better from your side of the world. So send through your pictures, 063-408-8863. We'd love to see how you wake up and what you see when doing so. So let us know as we get into your temperatures uh, throughout South Africa. And starting off, as always, Polo Kwana, you're up first, 15 to 29 today. Bombela, 18, rising to 13. You've got Pretoria, uh, 15 is how you wake up, and 30 is your maximum, and then Johannesburg, 13 rising to 27 degrees Celsius. Partly cloudy in your area as well. Mike King, let's move over to you. 32, nice and warm for you. 18 is how you start. Uh, Clarkstorp, a minimum of 16 up to 32. Kimberley, a very warm 34, uh, but you start your day on a minimum of 19 degrees as Celsius. Bloemfontein, 15 rising to 31 degrees as Celsius. Richards Bay, you can wake up to a fairly warm 20 as a minimum, a max of 28, an 80% chance of rain and some thunder. Uh, Peter Marisburg, 55% chance of rain and thunder, 16 to 26 for you. Uh, Durban, 21 up to 27 as a max, a 65% chance of some rain, and it is indeed going to be partly cloudy throughout the day. Now, Mtata, you can expect 15, and you jump to 26 with rain expected at around 84% chance. East London. 17 to 26 for you. Some rain expected to Craddock, 14 to 30. Kaibecha, you've got 17 to 24. George, 15, and you jump up to 24. The Mother City, Cape Town, 17 is how you rise this morning. 25 is where you max out. Uh, Worcester, 17 to 35. Sutherland, 12 to 30. And then showing off again, Uppington with a max temperature of 39 degrees Celsius from a low of 20. Remember, hydrate, stay in the shade, and have the best possible day with your Feel Good Breakfast show as we give you a little behind-the-scenes look at what you can expect. Ah, oh, thank you, Wasteable. Well, you know what? On Wednesdays, I don't bring food for breakfast. I'm here to eat. Not only is it the culinary hotline, but today is all about takeaways and fakeaways. So stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show. We are guaranteed to work up an appetite. Hey, what's that? This is Octifex, a new accessible platform to trade Forex on global markets. Cool. What's the Forex? It's short for foreign exchange, trading currencies. Buy low, sell high. Score, right? Exactly. What's leverage? It's like you got cool friends. They vouch for you and you can trade it big. Precisely. So basically it's an app where you learn and trade and it's safe and it looks good. That about sums it up here. Octifex, trading made clear. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is expressive, of course. Can you see him? Can you see that gorgeous? Oh, sorry. Sexy guy over my shoulder. 
I love it. We just went full inception there. <laughs> yes, we are back in the kitchen. Why? Because we are making fake aways today and we love it. What is your favorite takeaway that translated into your world? That's what we are asking you this morning. If you could be a takeaway, if you could have your own, what would it be? And um, we know watching your waisty line is Carl's, I That's think, right. uh, his conscious choice restaurant. What was your other restaurant called? Uh, it's, uh, the, what's, it's called the, the Carl Chef, by the way. <laughs> Carl Chef. That's right. Um, I think mine would be after I got bitten in the bum by a dog, and my sister sang this to me for a year, crumbs, bums, yums, mums, and I would make a little, little bum, little, oh, absolutely love it. So we want to hear from you guys this morning. What is your takeaway? And let's hear from Terence first. Hi, good morning to you. It's morning, Terence. Terence from Phoenix. Um, if I had my, my own takeaway, I would like to name it or call it Bacon, Bacon. Nice. Um, we've got Olivia also weighing in. Let's hear what she had to say. Good morning, Expresso. Good morning. It will definitely be, the name will be Olin. It's a combination of me, my name, and my wife's name. Oh. And we will sell Sunday lunches because oh. we love cooking. Oh, I am coming there every Sunday. I love that. Arusha, let's hear your creative inspiration. Good morning, Expresso team. Thank morning. you for the awesome show, as always. Um, if I can create a takeaway outlet, I will definitely call it Bunnies in the House. And <laughs> I will basically do Bunny Chows. Ooh. Um, this is from Arusha Singh in Centurion. Have a blessed day. Take care. You have a blessed day. I absolutely love it. Bunnies in the House. If you can do better, <laughs> let us know. 0634088863. What is your take out? outlet named we'd love to hear in fact let's speaking of the takeout vibe this morning it's a fake away takeover so let's get cooking Oh, but it's in the house. This is actually my favorite. This is great. Well, the thing is, we're going to do fake away for you a lovely recipe. You're going to love this one. It's so simple. It's so easy. So stick around because we're about to give it to you right now. Cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares, adding joy and stretching our imagination. Clover cheese, perfectly crafted. Made with love by Clover. So if you love having fakeaways, then you must try these Clover Elite cheese and chili dogs. A mouth-watering grab-and-go hot dog perfectly crafted from the comfort of your own home. And you can do it. You can put your spin in it. We're going to do a simple one just to start you off. A nice little foundation. The rest is up to you. As long as you use Clover Elite cheese, it's perfectly crafted. It's got a five-step uh, crafting process as well. It brings you superior quality, taste, and texture. It's a cheese that you need for this, and you can use any of their Clover Elite cheese uh, variants for their recipe. It's going to be fantastic. So it's entirely up to you. Sozo, you will be I doing... I got chili. started so long on our chili aspect. Okay, so cool. I just have a little bit of olive oil in here and I'm getting our onions to that translucent color. So we're just letting them sweat out a little bit. All and right. you are going to start off with our roux. Yes, I'm doing a, a lovely roux. I mean, a roux is a great way of actually bolstering any sort of sauce, uh, especially when it comes to, like, if you're going to do a macaroni and cheese, if you're going to do uh, something like a bechamel, like, this is the way you start, which is the most important way. And... It just starts off with a little bit of melting of the, of the, uh, the butter, and then we're going to go into some flour, and then essentially you're going to make like a stabilizing, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call it a paste, but like a good base for exactly what you're going to do. So while you're doing that, yeah. I'm going to add our garlic and then get our spices in. Now, chili Perfect. means you need chili. So we've got some paprika here. I have got, that's definitely going to add the bite for us, as well as a bit of cumin. And we're gonna let those spices cook through a little bit. Lovely. Just to really extract as much flavor from them. And then we're gonna season with some salt and pepper soon. Beautiful. My roux is looking good. And I mean, I, I love it when it gets to that. You get like a crumbly texture, then it goes down to melt. And then crumbly texture, and then it goes back to normal. And then I know exactly where we are with that. So Chef Clem Fantastic. taught me that yeah. if you're going to be putting mince in, you don't have to rinse it, but you can simply sorry, just... Sorry, what? You don't have to rinse it, but you just loosen it up a little so that it, to avoid the clumpiness. Yeah. So I'm just doing that right now. <laughs> this is fantastic. In fact, so that I want to give you what I'm working with now with the roux. So what I'm doing is I'm almost taking that layer and I'm actually just getting it. So look there, you see that is like a, that... And as it gets... A little bit pasty, you add some more liquid and then it starts stabilizing and stabilizing, which is the, the whole idea. So this is how we do it. And then once this mixture gets to a good temperature, we're going to throw in our cheese and then you're going to get this beautiful, luxurious bechamel, which is going to uh, 
pretty much go Ooh. on everywhere. So great with the chili dogs. And I'm going to add some tomato paste. Beautiful. Or tomato puree. Okay, now we're gonna go in my, with the cheese. And now the party is actually really starting now with the cheese. As we, and you're gonna have to stir this mixture quite often because you wanna make sure that it's not clumpy. Oh, and you There's don't nothing want it to worse. Burn. You, yeah, and also you, don't, you also don't want the clumps of, of flour to be in here either. You want it to just naturally go. And I'm gonna show you exactly what you got. You want it cheesy. And the great thing is that the arm work, if you don't go to the gym, this is a great alternative. The arm, the arm work is, is going to be like natural for you. It's going to be. Okay. This is exactly what we're doing. cooking looking. side by I know. Side. This is the best thing, isn't it? <laughs> I love this. And, and this is why. We'll assemble in a second, but I think this is a good foundation to give you an idea of what the recipe should be. Uh, so you want to make sure that, okay, the mince is not rinsed. It's looking good. It's looking um, fantastic. Also, my, my bechamel is also looking very good. So essentially, I'm getting, I'm getting that... Consistency as a, as a spin, so but I love like cooking, that's what you're looking for. Yeah. I love cooking mince in bulk. I like to play around with my mince. So obviously this is our chili, so we do want that a bit of a bite. But if you do want to like bolster it up a bit and yeah. add lentils or maybe some Ooh. some black beans or you know, I, I like to add some corn. Wow, wee wee wow. That's that's what it looks like. And now this is exactly the texture you're looking for. That luxurious texture. Oh look at that. So you want to get that. So it's pliable, but also it's got that stability in order to be poured over something. Oh, chili's going to add its a little bit of water. Fantastic. That's what I love. I like and then we are pretty much bread. almost ready to, to assemble, which I'm very excited about, by the way. This is like the perfect breakfast. Saucy. Saucy chili. and delicious. Okay, that's done. Done and dusted. Perfect stuff. All right, now let's go over to this station over here. Boom, boom, boom. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. So we've got our chili, we've got our roux sauce, our bechamel. <laughs> <laughs> cheese sauce. That's a cheese sauce, you know, did cleverly you cheese. cheese. Yeah, of course I did. Okay. Yes. I mean, it could be cheesy here, but I wanted to make I sure that it's nice cheesy. and stable. Do you want it cheesy? You can do that, definitely. Okay. Right, so let's do this. So what we've done here is that actually we've done a little pre, you know, uh, a little pre melt. cheesy melt on top. You just drop some of the cheese, the clove elite on top of that, a bit of jalapeno. Uh, you can put it under the, the broiler in your oven and then you get this as a, as a sort of a finished product as well, which is great. And now, do you want to do this? We have to do this together. Okay, we're going to take a little... You're going to do two of those. Two of those? Yeah, I'm going to do two. Yep. Okay, let's do two. You need to add it with chili. And that's it. And then a little chili. Allow me, madame. Go for it. Right, Please put some it. chili on mine that's as well. It. Allow me to, to chill you out. I want okay. more of that. Okay, a little more is yours, because this is breakfast. I want to make sure that it's perfect. This is breakfast and indeed. And then balanced as well. Hoo -hoo. And a little bit of cheese. Can you cheese me, please? I will be cheese cheesy me. with you. Be cheesy with me. There we go. <laughs> oh, and then we can finish it off with a little bit of the sauce you made. Yes, thank you. That's fantastic. I mean, that's how, that's how good it's rock and roll sauce. Did you hear that? It is rock and yeah? roll right? sauce. Right? This is the Thank you so much. It was his guitar. It was. That was, that was wonderful. But there it is. And that looks like you a great balance. You really love jalapeno. You know me so well. Uh, all the recipe ingredients are on expressoshow.com. Also, just like, I mean, make this a friend, a family member. It's entirely up to you. And remember that um, if you missed out on any of our steps, especially that uh, little bechamel cheese Ooh. sauce pot, there is a recap for you. That looks good. I know it does. Eat breakfast. Made with love by Clover.
It's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> We're trying to decide who should welcome you back. Should we say it all together? Yes, that's should it. I say it. Should I like your it? song. I like your song. Welcome, welcome back. back. Welcome, welcome back. back. Welcome, welcome back. back. Yeah. There Beautiful. we go. Yeah. Welcome back. Okay, yeah, I know we can't sing, um, but we can get passionately <laughs> invested in someone's journey to unlock their 100%. And this one tonight, it hits home with me because I dream of being a movie star and I dream of doing my own stunts. Oh, I do. oh look at you! <laughs> like, a, like a young Stallone. Even though you and Sylvester are probably the same age. Doesn't matter though, because I mean, this young actor uh, dreams of doing his own movie stunts, but has one big hurdle standing in his way a crippling fear of heights. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, watch as he faces his fears and takes on the ultimate leap of faith. I love it, and those look like real action heroes in real life. And that's tonight at 7.30 on SABC2, plus a little added bonus. You stand a chance of winning when you watch the show, just by watching. So you've got to take a look at the amazing prize and hear how to enter. Dive roll. Thank so, you. So. Support your health journey with a good night's rest by winning an Edblow queen bed with 10,000 Rand. To enter, comment on the competition post on the Clover Crush Facebook, Twitter or Instagram pages and tell us how winning this prize will help you unlock your 100%. Make sure you include the hashtag crush in your answer. Competition closes on the 19th of March at midnight. T's and C's apply. Oh, beautiful stuff. Thank you so much, Ryle, for changing people's lives. We absolutely love that. Now, excuse me, speaking of unlocking your 100%, we're now going to turn our attention to an up-and-coming local artist. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, Tepiso Seleke, otherwise also known as the Dark Room Artist, he is an internationally recognized artist, putting the spotlight on black lives and the culture through his photography. Let's take a look. How do I describe photography? I believe photography is, is a way of expressing yourself through, through images, you know. The images you capture, they, they tell a story that you want to tell. Hi, my name is Sebius Vasileke, also known as the Darkroom Artist. I'm a visual artist, also street photographer. Uh, the major theme I, I explore in my photography is more about telling stories of the black community, where mostly I come from. Empowerment. I'm more inspired about what they do daily to find like a sense of purpose in their lives so that the world will understand where we come from and where we are striving to be. Memorable spaces I've exhibited in. Ukezang uh, obviously my first solo show at MM Art House was, was actually a, a great show. I think that was where I got my big break. And followed by Photo London in the UK. That was also amazing because it was my first time showcasing physically uh, overseas. I believe there's no challenge between composition in, in both fields, you know. Once, once you can establish yourself as a good cinematographer, it can be easier as a photographer as well because if you know framing, you know what you want to achieve from an image or from something that's in motion. Because it's the same, you know, it's the same framing. The, the, the community of Soweto for me, it's, it's the bond we share, you know, especially through my work, my photography. I, there's a connection, you know, all the time, like you meet Abu Mama Bating Isayo in the street and you create a connection when you're buying. There's a bond initially that is sparked. So through my photography, it makes it easier for me to be able to communicate with them, make them understand what am I trying to achieve with my images, what am I trying to showcase, by also trying to give them a voice within my photography, you know? So it, it, it's a great deal for me. Impactful. It's amazing. They were hitting home, even taking them kind of second hand via another medium. Absolutely incredible. I can't believe how prolific he is at such a young age. Awesome. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. incredible. So, Kukle actually managed to connect with him in Johannesburg uh, to get to know the darkroom artist a bit better. So, you can take a look at this. <laughs> Is 
Tepi Sasilike is a visual artist and street photographer whose work not only holds your attention, but captures the heart through its deep portrayal of the black life, the experience, particularly in South African townships. As soon as I heard the darkroom artist, I went to your Instagram page, the darkroom artist, I went through your feed. It is aesthetically beautiful, but also gave me a sense of nostalgia as Umdo Kulele Ekasi. You portrayed the black life experience. How did Abandu Basekasi, you know, the township lifestyle, inspire you to make it a point of focus for your work? Uh, I think how they became the main focus of my work was to give them a voice because I felt like there, there were problems were not being attended, you know? And so it would have been easier giving them a voice, a platform through images so that at least the world can recognize what we struggle, you know, what we go through on a daily basis. What are some of the issues that you've managed to, you know, establish and highlight through taking these portraits of Ababandu that get up and get things done for themselves? I, I believe most of our problems is uh, unemployment, housing, because you can tell mostly with my images, you find people who are actually trying to make means to survive, you know, like creating self-employment, creating work for themselves. So that was more, that's more of the attention, I think, that, has, that I've actually highlighted a bit to the public. What do you hope to accomplish through this medium of photography and capturing, you know, the black experience? Mostly, it's mostly it's moments. It's not really curated, because even if I slightly try to curate it, it's more about having them in their own platform, in their own world, you know, cause, because of now, they are, they are buzzing, they are busy. So you can't stop them and say, hey, pose, do this, no. So I enjoy capturing that moment, that essence. And also the, the backdrop is to, to, to create hope. It's mostly about hope more than the struggle, you know. I think that's mostly what my work speaks of. It's hope more than anything. Talk to us about the backdrop that you choose to capture your subjects in, the tone and the theme of your work. People should do and not wait for, for the government or any other system to assist them. Because now with most of my images, you can tell that people are always up in the morning, making means, you know, fi finding solutions to, to survive. Mm. So that's mostly the, the highlight. Where to next for the darkroom artist? Anything you're currently working on? Any collaborations that we can look forward to? I, I have a couple of collaborations and shows coming up, but it's not really as concrete yet. So people can follow me on Instagram, the darkroom artist, just to find out what's next. And also maybe to get a bit of hope every morning. And that's exactly what the show is about, encouraging people to get up have a good day. Do what they can to have a better day than his own. And a better life. And a better life. Thank you so much, Tepisa, for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. That is Tepisa Sileke, an internationally recognized visual artist and photographer whose work captures the beauty and the lives and cultures of South African black people lived experiences. Ekasi Apa M. Zanzi. Thank you so much, Tepisa, for joining us this morning. No, thanks for having me. Wow, inspirational. I mean, sure. if you think about the human, it's just a human in its natural habitat and just the way, he, you know, he captures feelings, emotions, but also like the natural life. It's fantastic. It's really absolutely fantastic. authentic. I, I mean, I saw that pool behind them and all yeah. I could think was, oh, <laughs> like a lovely was, that, was, was a little bit of a scene stealer. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to go for a swim. <laughs> I love it. Or um, well, we're going to make you want that even more. We got a little bit of heat in the kitchen. It's hot wings time. It's fakeaways on the show this morning, and we are opening the lines. We'd love to hear from you. What is your go-to comfort food? If you could be your own takeaway chain, what would you call yourself? And if you could recreate your favorite takeaway at home, what would that be? 063-408-8863. It's the culinary hotline. Bling, ting, ting, ting. The NetBank and All Mutual Budget Speech Competition, empowering Africa's future leaders.
Oh, it makes me so happy to say this. Welcome to the culinary heartland playing Ting Ting Ting. Ah, oh, welcome to it, my friends. This morning's food theme must be one of our favorites. It's fakeaways. When takeaways get created at home, they just taste much better because you can infuse some love. And we've invited a chef that knows comfort food all too well, Chef Strone Henry. He is here to deal the goods this morning. And we want to know from you, what is your go-to comfort food? Join in on the discussion and send us your voice notes. And uh, you can use our WhatsApp line, 063-408-8863. Stone, welcome to it, my friend. Uh -huh. So good to have you here. Uh, you, there's a reason why you're here today. You've been making waves. People are loving your approach to food. We love the fake aways theme. But you're doing some crazy things. It's almost like you just, when you get an idea, like, I'm going to go and do it. Talk us through your approach, and I'm, I'm just, I can't get the visuals of you smoking out of my mind, because it's almost like you've taken the funnest elements of cooking and just taken them to another level. So, welcome to the show, Thank brother. Thank Give us a bit of background, man. Um, well, uh, I cook, like, I like food, as you can see. I love that. Like, I like to eat, so I just cook what, what I like to eat, and um, most of the time, uh, other people want to eat it as well. <laughs> Most of the time. I want to find that one person who isn't eating it. Um, and I love the fact that people are interested at cooking, in cooking at home, are getting more creative, are taking their culture and using that as a jumping off point to do something special. So this morning, I think a firm favorite. For me, once a month at least, I've got to have my hot wings, yeah. okay? Now we are doing them slightly differently. It looks like almost a bit of a Korean element, but we want it hot and we want it sticky and we want it sweet. So walk us through the recipe. Cool, here. it's very easy. So we're doing honey sriracha wings. Ooh. Uh, the main ingredients are honey and sriracha. And sriracha. Um, so in the pot, a little bit of butter. Lovely. Okay, I've got the chicken wings here, which I'm assuming we're gonna need to get cracking in our in, Into uh, the air fryer. air fryer, you can do it in a in the oven. Uh, best is obviously deep fried, but not everybody That's wants to deep fry yeah. at home. Air fryer, um, yeah, come on, man. Now, air fryer has changed my life, I must say. <laughs> Never mind my energy consumption, but um, I'm, I'm that guy. The first time I got my air fryer, I was like, I dehydrated some chilies <laughs> for nine hours. <laughs> yeah, it's just, if, if you can do it with a new piece of equipment, then do it. It's awesome. So the air fryer is brilliant because the best thing about chicken wings for me is the crispiness. Yeah. Um, so that can be achieved easily in the air fryer. Um, one trick that we have to crisp the, the skin up of the chicken wing a little bit is to dry brine it. So on, on those wings, we've got a mixture of baking powder, yeah. which sounds weird. Yeah. But there's a scientific reason, which I do not know, <laughs> um, that helps. But it just works, yeah. yo. It just so works, it's, yeah. it's a mixture of baking powder and salt. Um, and that's left in the fridge uncovered. Wow. Um, maybe for an hour, up to 12 hours, and that just helps to crisp the... Just give that extra crisp, yeah. Because um, I find out often I'll overcook things in an air fryer to try and get that crisp sometimes. And with a chicken wing, you're not using, you know, dealing with a huge amount of flesh. So as much yeah. as you want the crunch, you do still need some substance in there. Um, yeah, so the chicken, the chicken wing is the only other white meat on the wow. chicken. Wow. Not, not, yeah, not a lot of people know that. It's the breast and the I had no wing. idea. Yo, buddy, I'm passing that off as my own little, <laughs> little kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely love that. I had no idea. So your sauce, uh, everything goes into the into the pot basically, and you just want to bring it yeah, up to the boil. Um, if you like your sauce a little bit thicker, mm -hmm. let it reduce a little bit longer. Um, but as soon as everything comes to the boil, it's pretty much ready. Um, and and it's, am I right in the the balance? I think Koreans kind of that flavor profile really does work in this case. Having that kind of hot, a bit of sweet, a bit of a balance there. That's almost the, the most important thing with a good chicken wing is you've got to have a little bit of heat, but it can't be too much. So I think um, sriracha is Thai, not Korean. Really? Yeah, no, I just mean in terms of this, this like so, honey sweet vibe, you know? Yeah. Um, absolutely love that. Now we're obviously getting a bit of smokiness. So you've got a couple of your um, ready done wings there. Perfectly we can now dress prepared. up. <laughs> um, yeah, it's ready to go. So we're just pouring the sauce over. Um, we would if, like to let the sauce cool. Uh, but we don't have the time yeah, for that. It's, it's done for TV. Oh, look at that. Yeah. She has a little... Pop those into here. Go. Well, make a lot. Make, make twice as much as you yeah. think you're going to need. I, I have that feeling. Um, and and you can re-eat them in the air fryer the next day as well. Uh, see, and I often find the flavors develop even more in that sense. 
I mean, some toasted sesame seeds. Absolutely beautiful. <gasps> Easy peasy. I know we, we maybe cut a few corners yeah. there, but absolutely beautiful. So just, you know, 200 degrees for about 20 minutes, but you kind of know when your wings are ready and you know your vibe and you know your taste. So I think what we're going to have to do here is the taste yes. test. Um, unfortunately, all of our food gets eaten. Um, that's the way we work. Um, so, Carl, I'm going to need a taste test in here. What's the heat index on these? Can anyone give me a... a... La, 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 <laughs> la, 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 sing a happy song. Hi. Hi. You can both have a little bit of a taste. Can, can I have a taste here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? How's it, man? You know, I'm such a big fan of your work. Right, it's work as food. I know, yes, I know, yeah. I love it. Now, I, I, I asked for a heating rating on these and no one could give it, so I, I have no idea how hard. No, I think Four. these are going to be just in the middle, a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweet. Bit of smokiness coming from the sriracha. 4.3. 4.3. Yeah. Go for 4. it. 4.3, yeah. yeah. I want to see a bead of sweat. To um, do that. It, it won't it happen. I'm taking the top one here. This is how it goes. Look at this. Okay. Mm. First, this is okay. Going in. And? That's beautiful. It is, eh? Hey? And incidentally, this is the only other white meat on the chicken. I, I had to tell him that this morning. Yeah. 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 I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Which is surprising to me. So I understand why you've got to treat it with care. I'm going to have a little. I mean, I could use a bit of habanero, but I mean, this is all right. You know? So you like it hot? Okay. Huh? I love it hot, man. Oh. This is so good. No, this is one. This is wonderful. Also, that hack to dry out the skin mm -hmm. is mm. also oh. fantastic. Because usually, what I'll do is, if you don't have air fry, I'm going to do this. Have you ever oh. considered, like, on the braai? Mm -hmm. Okay, you make a little bit of a um, a mixture of corn flour. And you can actually add that to your marinade if you want to, but I like to just do it just like that with salt, oh, pepper, sorry. maybe some, um, you know, paprika. Mm -hmm. And you basically baste your chicken while it's brying. And what it does is the heat interacts with the corn flour and makes it almost like crunchy chicken. Almost, almost like, like a, a batter. Uh, yeah, like a batter. 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 It's so, so lecker. Yeah. So it begs the question, so I was at quite a high profile kind of big business mm. launch thing and they had chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't touch it, man. I couldn't. Would you, would you have this on a first date? Mm. Um, I've been out of the game so long, I wouldn't even, I don't know what to even uh, say. Like, she must rock up at my house with a bucket of these and then we are sorted. I will say that when I met my girlfriend, she didn't eat chicken. Yeah. And then we started a chicken wing business together. So, <laughs> she, she eats chicken now. <laughs> well, you know, in the first day, this is what's going to happen on the first day. You're going to have bones in your hand. Sort all over your mouth. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good way to kind of break the ice because... You can tell a lot of person about a person by how they eat their chicken wing, which part they delve into yeah. first, what they say, is it a okay, crunchy bit at the end. We're on TV now, man. Mm -hmm. No, you can do because it. Because I mean, if I, if I had to, if I had to, I will make this thing clean. So are you a wing or a, a drum or a flat guy? Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drum guy. Okay. Really, I'm a. Flat I think a drum's guy. easier to eat when you can just. Yeah. You know see, this is the thing. This is how much takeaways are part of our psyche, and of course, we turned the tables and are making our fakeaways today. But we put it to you: if you could be. A fast food chain, what would you be called? So let's hear, we've had some very creative answers this morning. Let's get a few mm. more. Mm. Good morning, Espresso, everybody. Good morning. If I had my takeaway, I would call it my massacre nurse com base. <laughs> 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 Absolute magic. Let's squeeze it one more. Morning, Candy. <laughs> it will be called a potoini, means at the pot. <laughs> I'll be selling everything traditional. Nice. Your tribe, Sam, Bab, Inyama Intlo, or etc. etc. Thank you. Bye. Check how, check how excited she's getting at the prospect of that. Us too. I love that. Uh, Jocelyn, let's get your vibe. A really good morning to my Expresso family. Hey. If I were to have an outfit, I would call it Chossy's Juicy Jaffles. Bye. <laughs> juicy Jaffles. I feel like, that's I like a, there's a place already. Chossy's yes. Juicy Jaffles. And I love Jaffles. Google that. Search for it. I absolutely love that. We love our takeaways. And, of course, we are doing them differently this morning. If you want to delve into any of the recipes that we are making this morning, you'll see all of our culinary delights on expressoshow.com. The culinary hotline bling continues in just a moment because it's a window and we love our culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. ding. <laughs>
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Now, four months after releasing her chart, topping hit Streams in the Desert, Jordan is ready to share her heart through music with the world once again through her second single, and this one's called Lies and Truth. Here's just a little taster of this brand new single. That messy breakup or addiction The burdens you carry you make them lie So let down the wall And she is no back with her vocals Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan is back in the house <laughs> Jordan, it's so great to have you here again It feels like you were literally here the other day Releasing your first single And now you're back with a second one it does feel like we were sitting on that couch together Talking about it, wow, time flies <laughs> Did you feel there was a bit of pressure After, you know, having a successful release of the first one That, ooh, the second one must be Or did you just kind of follow the heart And see where the lyrics took you? Oh yeah, there was there definitely was pressure. People were like, so when's the next one? You can't be a one hit wonder. You know how people release. So there was this con continuous like, when's the next one? Yes. But the best part was that it wasn't hard to find inspiration because I've I work with so many amazing people, um, young people that just inspire me to write because it is for them. Like that's what my music is for. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this one is called Lies and Truth. So I want to know who lied to you and who's <laughs> telling the truth. That's such a good <laughs> if it's run. the young people around you inspiring. <laughs> it's a good run. Well, what is this track about? Um, yo, it's the it's like a beautiful kind of cute melody and like catchy, but then below it is um, the topic of suicide and depression and anxiety that I work with a lot of like girls in high school okay. um, and there's a group that I've been mentoring for like seven years and there's a few new girls that have come in but out of the 15 like 13 of them have attempted suicide sure and not even just thought about it they've tried it and it's just scary like if this is their reality how many other girls and boys out there have struggled with this and so that's the message of the song it's actually like a, a love letter to them to say you are worth so much more than you think and your life is so important and I know that that, you know, it's so easy to find yourself in that dark space. You yeah. think you're the only one. You yeah. think you, you can't reach out for help. But you've been mentoring these girls and you've seen firsthand the impact it has when they are vulnerable enough to say, listen, I can't do this all by myself. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there are someone watching right now probably in that vulnerable space. Mm -hmm. Have you got any words of encouragement that you would love to give someone that's currently, you know, feeling like they're alone in that dark, dark space? Absolutely. I think the words of the song, I could sing them over and over. You are treasured and you are loved. You are enough no matter what. You are made in the image of the most beautiful one. And I think I needed these words when I was writing it as well. Um, and it's that just repeating these simple words that can actually change how you feel about yourself and your future, having hope for your future. And hope is what is important. Now, Jordan, earlier this morning, we have a social media question. Oh, wow. And you, you, you're social media queen yourself. <laughs> I should have thought so about this. Let's, let's take a look at what this morning's Good Morning Post was. Okay. If you had to create a takeaways outlet, what would it be called and what would your store sell? So what would the Jordan... Oh, my the, goodness. The Jordan store sell? It's a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, I mean, what's your favourite food? My favorite take, does it have to be takeaway? Oh, something that can be sold as a takeaway. Mm, guys, I just always wish for like a good curry. A good like, curry. A good like tarly. Is it called a tarly? It's like with different curries in it, then you've got your naan and your rice. Ooh. So I would definitely sell that. I'm not sure what it would be called, but it would be a curry something. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll give you some time to think about it because we literally just put you on the spot. Yeah. But we gave you a teaser at home of what her new song sounds like. Jordan, I feel like you should go take the stage. We can't mm -hmm. he wait to hear what lies and truth is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jordan on your Feel Good Breakfast Show.
There's been a lie that you're believing About yourself and about everyone else So you struggle with love, you can't receive it Like a locked garden, you keep your heart closed So let down your walls and open your doors Girl, there's nothing too shameful or dirty you've done, boy
break for show. That was beautiful. The lyrics to that song, it is so, so powerful. Oh, and, you know, this is a song that I think every young and old person needs to hear because yeah. I think we cannot get enough reminders about you are enough and you yeah. are loved. Thank you so much for bringing these, this beautiful song <laughs> to our screens and to our ears. And of course, you're not going anywhere. We've no. got more music <laughs> coming from Jordan on your Feel Good Breakfast show, so stay tuned, but let's quickly catch up with those morning headlines. Beautiful music, but of course, let's take a look at the news from around the world, starting off with national news. Statistics South Africa's quarterly labor force survey shows that some 169,000 more people found work in the fourth quarter of 2022, meaning that the official unemployment rate fell back to 32.7% from 32.9% in the previous quarter. The latest unemployment rate is the lowest since the first quarter of 2021. The figures further show that 28,000 more people were out of work in the fourth quarter, bringing the official unemployment figure to 7.8 million. Now, the Free State Premier, Kholisa Dukwana, says one billion rand has been allocated to roads authorities to enable them to expedite the maintenance of construction of roads in the province. Delivering his maiden state of the province address in Bloemfontein, Dukwana said uh, good roads infrastructure is the backbone of any provincial economy. He mentioned that the deteriorating state of the Free State's road infrastructure was a major stumbling block for economic development and added that it was imperative that the ways and means in which road service delivery, delivery happens is indeed changed. Now on to international news, the World Food Programme, the WFP, says it requires $450 million just to maintain its emergency food assistance to Syria, including to those in earthquake-affected areas. While the death toll across Turkey and Syria now exceeds 50,000, more than 8,500 uh, perished in Syria alone. And thousands more were injured and displaced. And the WFP's uh, chief, that is David Beasley, has described the scale of the devastation as truly incomprehensible. He said 12.1 million people are already uh, food insecure in Syria, with an additional 3 million on the doorstep of hunger. Now, provincial results from Nigeria's presidential election show that uh, Bola Tinubu of the ruling party is closing in on the victory. Now, with only five states left to declare, Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress Party, the APC, was ahead with some 7.5 million valid votes counted, making it highly likely that he will be declared the winner of the election to replace outgoing President Mohamedou Bahari. Uh, but opposition parties have rejected the results as a flawed process, which suffered multiple technical difficulties due to new technology introduced by the National Electoral Commission. For the next minute or two, our young folks especially must please listen up. Now, the renowned academic, Professor Ntlantla Make, has called on South Africa's young people to contribute towards the development of indigenous languages. The internationally acclaimed scholar said literature, songs and other art forms could be used to preserve language. Make delivered the keynote address at the annual Dr. Mkhotso Mapala Memorial Lecture, paying tribute to the late author, who wrote more than 40 prescribed books in his lifetime. Mapala passed away some two years ago, aged 66. And Marke said, and I quote, the books that he wrote for us are our heritage and must be born for our children. It's very important that we place them on the highest pedestal so that every new generation realizes what is left for them. And that it's also a way of celebrating other Sesutu writers. By specifically celebrating Dr. Mapala, we also honor all the Sesutu writers and the entire Sesutu culture as well. So speak your language, love your culture, and let's keep it going. As we wrap up with news and bring you on to sport, here's G. Cunning linguistics, we love it. Let's kick it off with cricket now. South Africa were pegged back by a revitalised West Indian pace attack yesterday. That was in that final session to eventually reach 314 for the loss of eight at the close of play on the first day of that first test playing out in Centurion. So the Proteas, they reached 206 for one at T and looked really strong. Then a run out began a bit of a collapse in which seven wickets fell for just 93 uh, runs. And Aidan Markram was uh, the mainstay of that SA innings, scoring a brilliant century before being bowled out by Alzari Joseph for 115. Joseph was definitely the pick of the bowlers as well, taking three wickets in his spell. Then on to football, and uh, never the kind of story we like to report on, but we hope for a very speedy resolution in this case. French prosecutors have opened a preliminary investigation into an alleged rape by Morocco defender Ahraf Hakimi. 
and a source close to the investigation has now confirmed this. A 24-year-old woman has accused the Paris Central Man fullback of raping her at his home in the French capital on the 25th of February. The source said the woman reported the incident at a police station on Sunday but did not file charges. The public prosecutor's office is now handling the case in Nanterre in the western suburbs of Paris. They declined to comment but have confirmed that an investigation had begun. Now on to positive news in the rugby space, certainly for two young players, SA Rugby 7's A squad members. Nook Hayward and Gershwin Weir have got their chance. They'll be joining the Springbok 7's team in Vancouver and will make their 7 series debuts over the weekend at the Canada 7's leg. So the duo linked up with their fellow Blitzbox and will replace Jaden Barron and Masanda Mchali, both of whom have been ruled out due to concussions, sadly. Then Travis Ismail, who made his Blitzbox debut back in Los Angeles last weekend, He's also been ruled out of the Vancouver tournament with a hamstring injury, but his replacement is yet to be revealed, and we'll get that out to you as soon as it is. Then, uh, sad news on the tennis front this time out, as Rafa Nadal has now withdrawn from the Masters 1000 event. Really happy hunting ground for him, and that kicks off next week in Indian Wells. That's because of a lingering injury. The Spaniard has not competed since losing in the second round of the Australian Open last month. The 22-time Grand Slam champion was expected to be out for six to eight weeks with that hip injury that that hampered his, or aided to his defeat at the, in the end by Mackenzie MacDonald. Nadal won at the California event in 2007, 2009 and 2013, but did lose in last year's final to American Taylor Fritz. And that's where we leave our sport for now. We'll try and get onto those headlines again at 8 o'clock, but as the roads wake up and we send you off to work, let's get you there safely. Zoe's got the latest. Thank you, G. Well, let's start off with traffic in Queensland, Natal, Durban. A tree has fallen down on the M7 East, leaving Pine Town and heading towards the Bluff. This is currently causing obstruction, so please use an alternative route this morning. Then in Cape Town, in the Western Cape, there's congestion on the N2 inbound at Jake's Gardwell Drive. Expect delays. And that's your traffic for now. Let's take another look at your weather. And we start off with some interesting news for you, and this is concerning climate change. Britain's King Charles has co-written a children's book on the environmental threats the planet is facing, simply named Climate Change. Now, last week, he hosted several global leaders at Buckingham Palace to support action on restoring the natural world. Speaking at the reception, the book's co-author and chair of Natural England, Tony Juniper, said the king wished to empower young people. He said the king was struck by the level of energy and passion shown by young people on these subjects, and he was keen to put something into their hands which was about those basic facts, figures and ideas, but also containing his personal message. In 2017, King Charles and Juniper wrote a book for adults about climate change. However, the new publication aims to make the topic accessible for 7 to 11 year olds. And it is, and I quote, trying to bring the facts to the fingertips of the people who've most to gain by finding solutions in time, end of quote. Well, on that note, let's bring it back home where we take a look at those beautiful sunrise views that you share. For your 7 a.m. update, Audrey Elise captured a flawless photo from palm trees to gorgeous skies. What a magical photo in Montclair. And then Fermita in Westville showcased a stunning view of the wispy clouds while enjoying some yummy tea. Nancy Govender shared a beautiful photo with us from her home in Uncomas, showing off the painting feel of a sunrise. And last up, Louise G. Cheery, heading to Chris Harney Hospital, shared this blissful view of the sky. Definitely looking like a lovely day. Well, thank you for that. If you have a beautiful sunrise view to share with us, our number is 063-408-8863. Let's look at today's temperatures. Starting off in Polokwane, your low is 15, your high 29. Mbombela, 18 with a high of 30. If you're in Pretoria, 15 is your low, 30 your high. Johannesburg, 13 with a high of 27. Mahi King, 18.32, Klerksdorp, 16.32, Kimberley, 19.34, if you're in Bloemfontein, 15 is your low, 31 your high. Richards Bay, 20, reaching a high of 28, Peter Maritzburg, 16 with a high of 26, 
Durban 21 with a high of 27, Mtata 15 with a high of 26. Some rain can be expected in East London today, 17 with a high of 26. Craddock 14 reaching a high of 30. Kabecha, your low is 17, your high 24. George 15, 24. Cape Town 17 with a high of 25. Worcester 17, 35. Sutherland 12 with a high of 30. And a hot day for Uppington, your low is 20, your high 39 degrees Celsius. We'll have a final update on your weather shortly after 8. Well, things are surely going to increase in temperature, given the fact that we have something very special for you in your Feel Good Breakfast show. Now, I'm sure you've heard of something called Italian, but we're going to explain it in detail. But let me just spell the T. Chef and T is here, Ixe. Yes! <laughs> and look at this face beat. I don't know, who, who did you make up today? I did it myself in the dark, I'll have you know. Oh, my word. Yeah. In the dark, you see. In what load shedding. shedding. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's done to us. <laughs> However, some amazing things come through out of the darkness. We've got Italian coming up. We've yes. got you in the kitchen. It's Correct. going to be the best possible day ever. Um, excitement levels out of 10. I would say 12. 12. This is it. Okay, yeah. this is your Feel Good Breakfast Show does that to people. Load shedding makeup and 12 out of 10 excitement. You better stay right there. <laughs> we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. It's my feel good breakfast show. Good morning, Bella Ciao. Bella Ciao. Welcome back. Yes, it is a beautiful day with the fattis and amonis. are launching a new campaign that celebrates the Ama Italiano oh. inside all South Africans. Come on! This is going to be great. Oh, and listen, this is going to be igniting the Ama Italiano in all of us by giving us the freedom to create inside and outside of the kitchen. Now, Kuchle had a front row seat to this stupendo Afro-Italian experience. It was bellissimo. Oh. And you should take a look. Magnifico, splendido, incredible. I've been brushing up on my Italian just for the occasion because I knew there are no other words to describe the feeling of being at such an event. Fatties and Monies are marrying the magnificence of Italian cuisine and local flavors. But of course, you don't have to take my word for it. How about you come with me inside to see for yourself? Sophia Loren once famously said, everything you see, I owe to spaghetti, which is a playful reminder that the simple pleasures in life, such as a delicious plate of pasta, can bring us joy. And Tembi, we have to owe it all to you, right? <laughs> to Fettis and Monis. <laughs> to Fettis and Monis. <laughs> Ciao. Buongiorno. Tembi, let's take it back. Please tell us about the history of Fettis and Monis. So Fettis and Monis has been in this country, South Africa, for over 100 years. So it is the brand that brought pasta to our people. So we owe everything to Fetis and Monis in terms of our culture and our heritage of pasta. That is incredible. Tell us about the main reason behind the brand's decision to reposition itself. Innately, pasta is not necessarily a South African cub, it's Italian. But as South Africans, we own it now. Because of Fetis and Monis, it's ours. So we wanted through this campaign for people to see themselves through this brand and through the positioning of Amataliana, which is a culture that really exists in yes. this country. And so the friend is part of that. We are the mirror that reminds you that you've always been Mataliano. I mean, look at you. Oh, of I course. Mean, look at us <laughs> and look at all these people that are here.
So the menu tonight was influenced by the theme, which is Afro-Italiano. We are celebrating this beautiful heritage brand of pasta, fetis and monies. Hence, we had like your jollof. You know, there was a jollof-inspired sauce with a bit of meatballs. We had, for the main course, we had like your salmon. But the inspiration there was just creamy spinach. She is talented, she is beautiful, and oh, so hilarious. I'm talking about Lesejo Tlavi, or should I say coconut cow? Both, both and, and either. The theme is Afro-Italian. What does that mean for you? Africanness is actually Italianness. We talk with our hands, as you can see. We love us some fashion, especially bling fashion, loud fashion. We love music, we love eating, and we love dancing. My highlight of the evening has to be the performance by Mafiki Zolo. Everyone rushed to center stage to dance along to our favorite songs by them and of course the fashion. One thing about South Africans, they know how to honor a theme. <laughs> the dancing and all has to be the food. I think the starters was absolutely amazing. What do they say in Italian? Bellissimo. My highlight for the evening, definitely the food and the fashion. They both start with F's, so obviously I'm right on brand. And I think that's what the event was all about. Food, fashion, Afro-Italian, come on. My all-time favorite Fatties and Moni's pasta dish has to be a classic Alfredo. It's very simple to make, it's creamy, it's rich in flavor, and it just elevates any pasta dish, to be honest with you. I like Italian food, so any the spaghettis, you know, have bolognese there, you know, but definitely go to. Lasagna. Lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes simple is better. Like I can, you can go carbonara, arabiata, you know, whatever. But sometimes a good bolognese, and then you can use the mince and bread. Girl, that is a versatile dish. It's a versatile That's a versatile queen. dish. She is <laughs> giving everything. <laughs> Most people use pasta as a pasta, and then you have a sauce on the side. I like to play around with it on a salad. Fetis and Moniz has like your original range that we all know, but it also has like the bellissimo range. This is like your premium range. You find the Fafale. I like to use it as a salad. I'm a big salad fan. Cucumber, tomato, make a beautiful dressing and then mix it together. But the starch is pasta, keeps you fuller for longer. All right, Lesejo, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. I'm going to need you to try our pasta tank twister. Are you ready? Peter Piper picked a plate of pasta from Pietro's place in Pisa. <laughs> Peter Piper picked a plate of pasta from Pietro's place in Pisa. Oh, is that right? Is that right? right? Woo! Peter Piper picked a place of <laughs> a plate of pasta in Pisa. Peter Piper picked a plate of pasta from Pietro's place of Pisa. Peter, Peter Piper, Piper picked, picked a plate, plate of, of pasta in, in Pedro called Pedro Pedro's something something Good night. <laughs> what else is there to say other than bellissimo that an evening of cuisine culture and of course incredible entertainment coming together beautifully if you at home are looking for an excuse to brush up on your own italian homemade cuisine look no further I'm just checking that my pants are enough stretch for what? all the... Right. the yeah, you have to... I literally let my belt out two rungs. <laughs> uh, can you say it? Peter picked a pack of... Peter Piper? Peter Piper picked Pick a pack of pasta from... Pietro's Piper. place in Pisa. Place. In ah. Pisa. That's it. Well done. Uh, we suck at that. That's why Kutle didn't ask us, which is <laughs> great. But we got the real stars to give us the background of what sounds like the most amazing campaign, and they're going to be doing that in just a moment. Stick around. This is nothing. This is just who we are. So, Alfredo. Hi. Go, Alfredo. We date Italian. So, Florence. We try Italian. Living La Dolce Vita. 
And now you can see. That's what it is. Gale, gale. We're Italian. That's why I was pizza. I'm Italian. And we always eat Italian. Every day. Fetis and mornings. Bravo to you. Simo, indeed, what an amazing launch party. I honestly wish I was there, except for the tongue twister. But a true celebration of South African subculture is Ama Italiano. So Afro-Italian perfectly uh, describes a community that exists throughout Zanzi. These are people who love all things centered around Italian culture and even go as far as identifying as Ama Italiano. They live, sleep, and eat Ama Italiano because they are and will always be Italiano at heart. And we are joined. We got the family together. <laughs> for fatty Zamoni's Italianos. <laughs> we got coconut cows. <laughs> Healthy and quinazi. And chef and tea to reach us. <laughs> and how to ignite the Italiano <laughs> in ourselves. Take a listen as we discuss through what is a hundred years of fatty Zamoni's and understanding what you need to understand about Amma Italiano. Welcome. Thanks for coming to my table. <laughs> Thank Sorry, you. I had to. I, just, I, 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 I blacked out. I blacked out. I'm sorry. What just happened? Not the Godfather. It's just it's so, it's so great. It's like looking for the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so, so this Afro-Italian culture, um, I just wanted to to kind of get an idea of what it is to each and every one of us, because we all have a different idea of what Afro-Italian culture is. So, uh, first, coconut curls. Okay, so curls or Lister Hawk? Because there's two people. Yes, yes. So who are you looking for today? I'm looking for curls. Okay. Okay. Hold, hold, no, 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 wait, wait. Wait, if I can have an option. Yeah, no, but you chose. No, 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 I didn't choose I'm yet. Here. I didn't. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Continue the interview, please. Okay, I, okay. Can't, I can't undo it. Oh, yes, okay, well, okay, now we, we, we'd be there now. We're yeah. all the way there. Yeah. What's Afro Italian to you? Okay, so they bring the Afro. Yes. I bring the Italian. Oh, perfect. Um, so it's a perfect mixture of Escabenga, Caucasian. Um, so as you can see, it's like a, it's a brand mix. That's what we decided to do. So Afro Italian. Yeah. Alfie? It really is that. It yeah. really is that. Skebenga, Skebenga, Skebenga. Um, but it, it was such an incredible experience yeah. because um, as, 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 as Kel said, we, we, we talk with our hands. We express ourselves through fashion. We love our food. I mean, look at yeah. us. Yeah. I'm so working us. out. Us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, that was all you. That was all you last week, OK? So I'm still trying to work all of that food out of me, but it was incredible. It's carbs. I mean, it always makes you happy. Oh, please. Chef oh, and tea. Of course. I mean, for me, Afro-Italian um, means just a fusion, you know, yeah. celebration of a heritage and just fusing it with this beautiful Italian pasta and just making it our own. I grew up in Soweto and I grew up with Amateriana. I mean, you'd see gents looking <laughs> good, uncles smelling great, and yeah. the food was always amazing. So for me, it's just looking good, feeling great, and just fusing our heritage with this beautiful Italian Italian pasta. Well, I'm also ashamed. Yeah. Just yes, to let you know, they've never been to Italy. Oh. Oh, they Sorry. have been to Italy. Been she to lived Soweto. in Italy for two years in Bari. Are That's a suburb in Soweto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I see. Well, okay, let's just talk about Fatty Simonis because yes. Fatty Simonis is this whole concept of Italian. I think it's it's really great. But I mean, what what is Fatty Simonis? I mean, what is that authentic Italiano thing? I mean, chef, just with regard to working with their products. I mean, it's just looking at, at the product. First of all, the product is yeah. uh, vegan. This is premium pasta that you'll find at the most accessible price. And this pasta can do so much. I mean, today I'm playing around in the kitchen and I'm using the Bucati. And Bucati is like spaghetti, but just a little ho hollow uh, inside. Yes. And Bucati. Have, yeah, yeah, Bucati. Oh, oh, Bucati. 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 I woke and, up in a new Bucati. <laughs> Yes, ah, okay. And we are serving that with a South African favorite. I mean, we love our chicken livers, so we're making Ooh. berry berry chicken livers with creamy ushatini. So ushatini, obviously, it's like a tomato-based yes. sauce. Uh, oh. So that they, that's where you have your Afro Italiano on a wow. plate. I, I am I'm feeling it. In fact, <laughs> I really started feeling it at that Italian. There was a PR launch as well. Alfie, how did it yeah. go down? Did you really get that? Italiano, that Amma Italiano feel from it. We really got it. I mean, people brought it. Um, the outfits were incredible. Yeah. The food was 
crazy. I mean, my experience of pasta is always just that little, you know, spaghetti and mince. No, people brought it. Yeah. Chef Nti was just going crazy. But also, it was just so nice to immerse ourselves with such like-minded individuals who celebrate, yeah. you know, being Afro-Italian and just enjoying themselves in good company, great food, mm. good outfits, and just enjoying our oh, lives. Look also, good. Like, my figures were also was just immense, mm. guys. We were we were on that dance floor going crazy. Working off the cops. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. That's that's the vibe. Yeah. Cardio. And that's it. You have to, yeah, <laughs> cardio and cops. That's the balance that we need in our lives as well. But coconut slash curls. <laughs> you have to pick one. No, it's coconut cows is one piece. Okay, okay, coconut cows. All right, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Fatty Simonis, what is next? What's what do you expect from this entire campaign? What do you want out of it? Um, are people going to be flown to Italy? I don't know. Hopefully. Uh, hope, <laughs> please. Hopefully. I'll put in the universe for you. <laughs> um, yes, Fatty Simonis, if you're watching, of you, you are. Um, <laughs> see you in Milan next year. Sorry, I expect yes. nothing less now at this point. It has to happen because you said it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. in the universe now. It's in the, we have to go. Well, yeah. what makes you excited besides the carbs about Fatty Simonis in this entire I think, campaign? I, like, I only eat carbs from 12 to 2 p.m. <laughs> Um, so I'm very excited that like there's a whole lunch menu. Chef and Tea has yes. made it sort of African, so I allow a little chance to have ushatini. I hope yes. I'm saying that right. Yes. Lots of things. Um, it's a very difficult word. <laughs> I sprained my tongue. But so excited to try African food, traditional African food, yeah. with, like an Italian twist. <laughs> I feel like a sisi. Sorry. <laughs> a sisi. Yeah. Wow. It sounded like you added someone to an email. Um, wow. That, that's fantastic. Look, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great campaign ahead. Uh, I love the fusion of culture. I think yeah. that the best way to connect people is through food. I mean, and not only at the table, but also through culture. Sure. We can do fusions, and it's not going to dilute any of the cultures. 100%. It's going to make them stronger together. Yes. Indeed. And, and that's what you're all doing. So thank okay, you so much. Okay, Nelson Mandela. Thank you very much. Well, Chef and Tea has got a recipe for you in the next couple of minutes. So after the break, it's going to be a masterpiece. She's got some culinary skills up her sleeve, and it's going to be one of those days with Fatty Simone's Bravo! I'm Italiano. We'll be right back after this. Don't you go anywhere. Don't you go. <laughs> this is nothing. This is just who we are. Joe, Alfredo. Aye. Go, Alfredo. We date Italian. So, Florence. We try Italian. Living La Dolce Vita. And now you can see, that's what it is. Got you, got you. We're Italian. Perfect. That's why I was pizza. I'm an Italian. And we always eat Italian. Every day. Fetis and Monis. Bravo to you. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back.
it is your feel good breakfast show and I'm pretty sure we just had the best conversation that left you feeling hungry and we are now further igniting the Ama Italiano in you by giving you the freedom to create inside your kitchen. Now pasta is for everyone and you don't need to be Italian to eat Ital Italian and nothing screams Afro Italian like a truly inspired meal of usciatini and chicken liver spaghetti. Now Chef Nti, she is in the kitchen, a true Italiano, and she's joining us in the kitchen to show us just how to make this delicious dish and how easy it is for you to eat Italian. Yeah. And she brought Alfie with her in the kitchen, and we so are small. about to whip up this delicious meal. 100%. Chef, before you start, I have yes. to say I'm a huge fan of chicken livers. Mm -hmm. Alfie, what are your cooking skills like on a scale, a scale of z one to ten? I just, do we have insurance? <laughs> We will arrange Do we have that. Okay, cool. As long as we've got that, if anything burns, so, yeah, we're good. No, we'll we're handle the stove. I think what you're going to do for us is sure. just anything that has nothing to do with the stove. So not burning. Yes, good, 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 good. <laughs> no burning. Okay, oh. so this is, I mean, one of my favorite ingredients. I love that it uses everyday, one of my favorite recipes, using everyday ingredients, mm. everything you find in your cupboard. So, Alfie, to get us started, I'm going to need mm -hmm. you to... Blitz all of this. We've got tomato, peppers, mm -hmm. a bit of aromatics with ginger, garlic, and some habanero Ooh. chili. Oh, nice. It's going to give it that nice bite that we love. Ooh, so yes, everything, please. all in one. Everything. All of cool. it. We toss it in there and blitz it to a smooth consistency. While you do that, I'm just going to go uh, go ahead and just saute my chicken livers. Fantastic. Livers. So, Chef, you don't have to pre-cook your veggies, pop it in the oven before no. blitzing it up. You can just go straight from, from the fridge into the blender. I actually love that question. You could roast them first because okay. if you do, then mm -hmm. you elevate the, 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 the taste, mm -hmm. you know? Ooh, okay, but, so, yeah. so you could go both ways. 100%. But because Alfie's here and he told me okay. he's really hungry, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and do it without putting them in the oven. Okay. So my chicken levers go into the pan. We are multitasking, right? Yeah. We are multitasking yes. and I'm just making sure we're getting all the ingredients in there. Amazing. So with my chicken levers, I'm going to add some okay. cumin for some beautiful earthy notes, a bit of chili. I've got paprika. No, actually, this is cayenne. Cayenne and some chili flakes. Oh, okay. Already <laughs> <laughs> added. Love okay. ingredients. Thought I'd make space for you. More <laughs> tomato, please. Oh, more tomato. <laughs> more okay. tomato. Cool. Add in your ginger, add in your garlic, add some onion. onion. Oh, my word. Sure, this is so, the pressure. So, Chef, when it comes to finding the right livers, yes. do you just simply, the ones you buy that are raw at the store, do you just wash them and you're ready to go, or do you treat your livers beforehand? Ginger. I like to get my livers, I mean, when I get my, I like to get them frozen. Okay. You know, so I can have them to use for later. So you defrost and then wash them, you know, and, and you're, you're good, good to, to go. go. Okay. Yeah, and okay. these are easy to find. Every supermarket, yes. most of our main supermarkets have them. Ooh. Okay, so. That's me. That, you see, I'm what? doing that. It's not moving though. Oh, there oh, yeah. it is, there it is. A little bit of patience. Oh, bravissimo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, good. Good. Yeah. Awesome. See? How's the consistency, Chef? It's beautiful. For Is me, it? it's also the colour. Mm. I mean, yes. if you look at the colour, look yes. at the finished yes. product. So I went ahead and made it. In advance, in advance for you guys. That's okay. But how gorgeous is that colour? That yeah. is a bright colour. Yeah. And that's what happens when you blitz your tomato sauce, your ushatini. Mm. Ushatini. And we're gonna add a bit of cream into it. Mm. Okay, so we're sauteing our chicken levers. High heat. And when these are cooked for about three minutes, we're gonna add our sauce in there, mm. add our cream, and finish it off, and it's gonna look like that. Oh, and it's just gonna be creamy. And yes. I love the fact that we're adding some cream, because you added the chilies, which I is then the gonna chili. just balance it out. 100%, and we've you got, got more chili though. in here. We've got more cayenne pepper, we've got more chili flakes, sure. because very, very chicken yes, levers. Yes, you cannot have chicken levers without heat so. in them, you know? But can you smell the ginger? Ah, oh, it's ooh, fresh. It's so ooh. fresh. This is, oh, it, it, I love know, it. I know, right? I know. <laughs> that is a beautiful mixture. Okay, the most important part, our pasta. Yes. Now, this dish can happen in under 20 minutes, really. So let's start with that one okay, there. That one. Well, okay. There we go. Oh, now, Chef, you were saying this is like a spaghetti yes. that has, is it like 
it's got a little hole in it, it or is that a little the... hole in it? Now the trick with the hole is you want a nice and loose it. sauce. Thank you so Ooh. much, and toss them in there. Okay. So you when, while you're eating, some of the sauce is literally stuffed Ooh. Ooh. in there in that spaghetti. It's one now, of my favorites. How have I not known about this? Because yeah. it just elevates your culinary experience and what's 100%. amazing is Ooh, the smells delicious. bellissimo range it is guaranteed quality italian yep. inspired pasta and the range has a non-sticky texture it maintains its shape and yeah. it's rich golden color that really deserves uh, it, in, in fact it will deliver great tasting and versatile meals see so. i love i love that i love that uh alfie did not break our pasta oh, because yes. that is a golden but rule that's the, yeah that's the first yeah. rule that's the first rule you can, get arrested yeah can i tell you the first time i cooked it like that in front of people they were like oh you can't do that i'm like no this is the way you do it so yeah. you have yes. those long long yes, strings yes 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 hundred yes. percent yeah. And we're going to let it, we salt our water, because the water needs a bit of seasoning, very right. important. Okay. A well, lot of water seasoning. There. Where Lots do we add salt. the water? In here? Or in here? No, okay. no, we need there seasoning, is... oh, salt. Okay, cool. So there's a salt, salt there for the pasta. Uh, and, and you would normally add your pasta to boiling water, is that to correct? To boiling water, okay. yes. So our water was already boiling, you add it to boiling water. Obviously, if you had a bigger pot, then you want to go bigger, because mm. then it's easier okay. for it to handle this level of this much pasta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, Ooh. fantastic. This meal is coming it? together oh, so beautifully, Chef. Gorgeous, Bored gorgeous. for me. Thank mm. you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, oh. food is good. We need, to, we need to enjoy food and not feel guilty. Yes. So you see I'm reducing heat as I add my cream. Mm. Very important because otherwise then things go south and no one wants that. No, and we yes. want that creaminess. 100%. Ooh. We and want all this deliciousness to go into those beautiful pasta. And watch them just go into the water, mm. hey? Oh, mm. this is giving me dinner inspiration for tonight. So every Wednesday we do girls' night between yeah. me and my friends. I love it. So tonight's my turn to host and I actually left home this morning not sure what to cook. Yeah. But you've given me the perfect recipe and inspiration for tonight's girls dinner. amazing and this is everyday ingredients so you can even share the recipe with your girls oh. they can make it for their families so us south africans love us a good chicken liver so i'm sure a lot of them are going to enjoy i'm Fantastic. somebody who hates cooking so i'm actually really really impressed by how simple all of this looks yeah, yeah. so maybe maybe i'll make my own meal uh-huh <laughs> so, so chef yes. we are do we coat the pasta in our livers or do you prefer to rather serve your pasta and then add your your toppings Wh I, which do I, you prefer i really like to coat my pasta in mm. the sauce that's okay. very important so once your pasta is cooked take a little bit of the pasta water as you can see the sauce is nice and thick just mm. to loosen it up a little bit you add it in, in there and then get your pasta mix it together mix Ooh. it together and then we serve and it and that's like what that. it looks like Oh, yes. Fantastic. I'll see, that is your portion. Oh, my well, word. Well, don't you <laughs> feel like sharing with, with Coconut Cult? I, I'll, I'll share some with Coconut Cult. Should we invite okay. her yes, in yes, to yes, come yes, in? Yes, 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 yes. She might just have a bit of FOMO. I do. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't cook, though. I don't no. cook. A little bit, but I don't cook. <laughs> in my it's house, okay. Sorry. It's okay. You can cook. This is yeah. cook. So I can cook. Yeah. Cici you can cook the tasting. How gorgeous is this? It looks okay. very delicious. This We've is got so a fork nice. For you. See, but now it's not twelve, but we're eating carbs, but it's fine. I know. Because it's chef and tea, it's fine. You know and what? Carbs. Are These are good kind of carbs. It's Ooh, twelve yes, o'clock yes, somewhere yes. else. Mm. It is. Mm. It is. I'm gonna taste one of these. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Mm. Oh. Well, listen, Balissimo, I'll Balissimo. definitely say that. Balissimo. Oh. So can I tell you a quick story? I lived in Italy for like two years, and the first word I learned when I got there was Bellissimo. 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 Wow. But you even say it properly. You even Bellissimo. say it the best yes. way. Listen, it's beautiful. On behalf of Alfie, can we have a scarf tin? Oh, of course. Thank you so much. There's always is a scarf tin in my so house. Much. Yes, a yeah. tapaway. Yeah. Is, yeah. is, is that a butter No tapaway. We've yeah. got scarf tin. Scarf tin. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, well, listen, the difference. we are enjoying this recipe. If you want to get your hands on this delicious recipe <laughs> that Chef and T just showed you, it's available on our website. Expressoshow.com. Alfie, you're not going anywhere. Okay. Chef and T, you're not going anywhere. Okay. Stick around on your feel-good breakfast show. We've got more fun coming your way. 
amazing. Stuff. Yes, we shall eat and we shall revel in the talents of this gorgeous human being, Jordan <laughs> Tui, our very own. I'm going to keep calling you our Aww. own Jordan Tui forever and Thank just get used to it. And, and even when you're ridiculously famous, you're still going to be our Jordan because we love you so much and we're so proud of you. <laughs> Um, that being said, like a pat on the back is great, but Thanks. actual validation of seeing your song climb the charts, and I think you're at wow. number nine last time we checked yes. on the CCFM as it stands. Yes. That's got to be like on some level, whew, okay, it we're is. doing it, we're doing it. I'm so grateful. And, the, and then tonight, I'm very excited to be uh, on Good Old FM for the first time tonight, Yay. debuting with streams. Uh, Chad Simon will be putting me on the, I think it's Unearthed. Oh, brilliant. Or well, you like have officially been unearthed, girl. Thank I absolutely you. love it. So, in fact, we're going to take you back to that True North, to that first song that Thank kind you. of started this journey. A bit of background quickly for Streams in the Desert. What's the, the thrust here? Oh, Streams in the Desert. It's the song that you sing in the middle of that tough time, that like desert situation. Sure. That's reminds yourself there is something good that can come out of this. Out of everything, the worst situation can yield a fruit. Oh man, could change your life. Well, yeah. in that vein, let's go into that headspace right now and you can enjoy, savour every second of streams in the desert. Jordan, take it away.
Won't you pour it out? Won't you pour it out? Won't you pour it out? You pour it out, you pour Taking my weary legs and making them run again. Wow, all day, all day, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Jordan Tui on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. That's available for download. Download it nine times today, ten, in fact. We love you. One more performance coming your way. See you now. It's my feel-good Oh yes, Mzanzi, listen to this. Now, Crush is bringing you another episode of Unlock Your 100% on SABC2 tonight at 7.30 p.m. And I am so, so excited. Now, I'll be going on a journey to help you unlock your 100% and live your full potential. Now, while Crush team is making all the magic happen, we've got Jurgen McEwen right here in Cape Town. Now, he's a professional actor with a fear of heights and someone who wishes to do film stunt work. Well, let's find out more right now. Jurgen, brother, how you doing, oh, man? I'm good and you, man. <laughs> so good. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure to get to know you over the last few while, but I'm not going to reveal too much. Tonight is uh, so, so tonight exciting. Tonight is the night, eh? Yeah, man, but let's get straight into it, bro. Your, your acting career, it's now become a professional thing. When was the first time and why was it first time for you to decide that this is something I want to make for myself? I want to make a career out of this. This is what I want to do. 
How did that come about? Man? So whenever I get this question, what I normally ask myself is, do you want like the real, real answer? Do you want like the TV answer? Now I like, want a real, <laughs> real, man. Give me the real, real. So, so my journey <laughs> basically with acting started uh, in grade 10 when I actually went to school in Spirit Secondary. So it's an arts and culture okay. focus based, yeah. uh, based school. My first moment on stage was where I actually played the role uh, of, of the Clint Princey, you know, okay. the, the yes, small yes, little yes. boy, because yeah. I, was, I was very small. I remember when the curtain opened, like the first, five seconds on stage literally feels like a lifetime. And I was there and like the words didn't want to come out, like nothing came out. Oh no! And then I, I don't know what happened and then I, I just didn't remember, I closed my eyes and the moment I opened it up again, everything just came. Like uh, I remember that night I actually won a, a silver award uh, at the um, Arctic Cafe for my role as yeah. the Clint Princey. And immediately after that, I, I, I just wanted more, man. I wanted to beat that five seconds of silence that I had. And I just knew that, yeah, this is, this is something that I actually wanted to pursue. And I think that is how I just basically got into it, doing roles at school. And then afterwards, we went to go and study uh, drama at the University of Stellenbosch. Yeah. And then from there up until now, I, I just feel like, yeah, I want to beat that five <laughs> seconds of silence and just get five seconds of fame, to put it that way. Yeah. But look, man, you've done more than just that. I mean, you've already gone into a, quite a successful career as it yeah. is. You've had a few stunts in uh, live acting, theater, uh, you name it. Where do you plan and hope for your career to take you in the future? It's, it's quite difficult because I, I'm, I'm very more theater orientated than I am when it comes to actual television. But I've, what, I, what I've realized is like doing stunts and stuff just, just really like livens me up, like yeah. jumping all this stuff and like just getting through stuff. So I feel like I'm more action packed guy. So I feel like I, 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 would, I would gladly go more into that direction. Yeah. Um, and I, I also realized that the scope that we're having now, especially on, on South African television, um, we, we're moving more towards action packed stuff. So I feel like that is where I really want to go into, like driving, you know, Fast and, and the Furious essay. And I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, we had an incredible opportunity to get involved in some action. And man, I can tell you, you definitely are built for it. You're built for it. <laughs> you own that completely. Uh, and I absolutely loved it. I would imagine more action-packed roles for you is definitely something that you would want to take on in the future, right? Yeah, f funny enough, the day that we were, I don't want to give away too much, yeah. but when, when we did our little stunt thing, uh, within that moment, I felt so alive. Yeah. And when it was over, I was like, how is this done? So <laughs> the adrenaline is still pumping. So I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have more fun doing action packed stuff than like, just... Clearly, you know. and now, Mzanzi, let me tell you, you definitely want to watch the show because there's so much that went into helping this man conquer his fears and achieve an incredible goal. And if you aren't aware of it, the man had a massive fear of heights. Yeah. We did something <laughs> wild to overcome that. I want to ask you now, how's that fear? Is it still there? Do you think you've conquered it yet? Or I'm not going to reveal to Mzanzi how we went yeah, about yeah. conquering it, <laughs> but right now as it speaks, how are you feeling about that fear? Well, what I can say, is it, it definitely made me look forward to, to, to what's next, you know, yeah. like I, I feel like I can conquer anything now. Uh, the fear of heights that I conquered, for now, yes, um, I feel like there's always something new, like there's going to be higher heights than what we were. Excuse the pun, I see what you did there. So I'm basically just looking forward to the next, like, next episode, like the next thing that's going to happen, yes. the next step, the next higher, you know, like the, the more, like the higher you go yeah, up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. But I feel like for now, I've definitely conquered it. Like, definitely. Man, the way you handled yourself, I, and, and let me tell you, Mzanzi, we put this man in some absolutely crazy situations. Oh, I cannot wait for you to see it. You <laughs> definitely want to find out what happened on the show and it's happening tonight, of course. Look, let's just play a hypothetical right now. Let's put this out into the atmosphere. Send it out let's to Mzanzi. Spread it out. You got a role coming up. What is it going to be? What is the production? It's something you really want. Make it happen right now. Let's, let's, let's foretell that future. So what I'm definitely looking forward to doing is seeing myself being the lead in the next big essay action-packed yes. movie yes. where there's scoping, slutting, yes. springing, hopping. I, I'm there for it. I, yes. I'm definitely going to be the next guy. I'm putting it out there. Yes. Oh, Zanzi, Jürgen McEwen, remember <laughs> the name? I absolutely love it. Now, Zanzi, you too can get in on the winning action. You at home stand the chance of winning a queen-size Ed Blow bed valued at 10,000 Rand, and that's to help you unlock your dreams. You see what we did there? Now, you too can enter, so watch the show tonight on SCBC2 and comment on the competition post on the Clover Crush Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages. And tell us how winning this prize will help you unlock your 100%. And don't forget to include the hashtag crush in your answer and the competition 
competition closes on the 12th of March, 2023 at midnight. Now the T's and C's can be found at clover.co.za. So don't forget, tonight's episode, it's happening 7.30 on SABC2. And with that, my friend, let's do a cheers to you, unlocking your dreams and all the magic that's gonna come to it. Crush the next one. Crush it, brother, <laughs> cheers, man. <laughs> mm, that's good. <laughs> Unlock your 100% this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. as we take on the ultimate fear. Meet an actor who dreams of taking his career to the next level by doing and performing his own stunts. Only problem is, there's one big obstacle standing in the way. Outside I look tough, but deep down, you know, height stress gets me. Watch as Jurgen McEwen unlocks his 100%. Wednesday, the 1st of March at 7.30 p.m. Only on SAPC2. Oh, well, listen, when it comes to your fitness, we love to make sure you are looked after. And someone who is not shy of reaching her 100% is our next guest. Now, it's still possible to get a great workout without fancy machines or an abundance of free weights. Well, we are here to make sure you are looked after. And we have personal trainer Kara Janse van Rensburg here to show us exactly how to do our workout, especially if you don't have access to weights at home. Exactly. Kara, it's your first time on Express, yeah. right? <laughs> so, you're going to take us through a bit of a workout, so where are we going to start today? Okay, so we're going to be doing a little bit of an upper body workout, where we'll basically be focusing on the back, some of the arms. So, I'm just going to do some plank walk-ins to begin with, just to warm the body up. Okay. okay so, this is how we're going to start. We're going to start by the, feet, by the feet and walk outwards into a plank position and walk back up. We're going to do two more of these. And chest down. And stay. And back up. Very nice. One more. And these are great. Yeah, these are great for the overall body, even your core. Fantastic. All right, there we go. Next, we're going to grab some weights. If you have weights at home, you can use that. You can use water, bo water bottles. Oh, we are using or, our crush, so yeah, I'm going to go for you. the smaller one. Yes. So basically, what we're going to do is let's face, you can face to me. We're going to do a little bend of the knees, feet shoulder width apart, and we are going to bend over slightly, keep your neck neutral with your spine, and we are going to pull to the back. So make sure that you are bringing your shoulder blades, squeezing nice and tight. Let's do three more. One, two, and three. And naturally, the bigger you go, the heavier exactly. it will be. Fantastic. All right, next thing we'll be doing some bicep curls, bicep for curls. the biceps, but we're going to do it with a bit of a squat. So just to get the core engaged nicely. So we're going to squat, bring them up. You can get a little lower. Oh. Let's do three more of so these. So we're staying in the squat One, position. two, and three. Very nice. Fantastic. Okay. We are done with those. Next thing we are going to do are some dips. Right, so these are for your triceps. Get on your mat, your hands just beside you. You can actually make them face the other way. Okay. There we go. So what we're gonna do is bring your feet in and you're gonna go up like a tabletop, a little bit more, and, sorry, hands out of the way. Okay. <laughs> My bad, sorry. And we're gonna dip. Ooh. Yes. Okay, so this is great if you don't have a bench or a step or a chair yes. to do tricep dips from. Yes, so you don't want to make your elbows go too far rotated. Let's okay. do three more. One. To keep the elbows controlled. Yes, so just a little bit of a dip. And your glutes just touch the floor to get the triceps going. Okay. Okay, next thing I want us to do, back with the bottles. We are going to be doing around the world. So what we do with these, we go all the way up and all the way down. Let's do four more of these. One. Which are the great muscle groups that around the walls target? This is mainly a shoulder movement. Okay. So shoulder, upper chest, yeah. Let's do three more of these. 
Oh, and one. Fantastic. <laughs> well, Kyra, it's been amazing how you showed us how we can do easy exercises to work the upper body from the comfort of our own home. If you are traveling or you perhaps don't have weights at home, there are alternatives. There's no excuse nice for that. Nice and easy. Use tin cans, use yes. water bottles, use yeah. fruit juices, get everything going. So you can just add that little bit of resistance. Kyra, for people that want to get in touch with you to be able to come and train with you, because you're a personal trainer yes. as well, where can they find you? On Instagram, my handle is Kyra underscore Lynn. Oh, yes. fantastic. Well, Kyra, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for and having showing me. us that fantastic upper body workout. The Ned Bank and All Mutual Budget Speech Competition, empowering Africa's future leaders. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso live on S3. We've still got so much action for you. We've got news coming up as well as a little bit more when it comes to pasta. However, I saw something happening here because after Zoe did a nice workout with Kyra, I just thought, um, sorry, coconut curls. Why, why are you doing fitness now? I thought um, uh, Zoe is no. supposed to do fitness. No, Kyra is my um, personal Pilates instructor. Oh. And because you guys called me here and wasted my time, I said, babe, let's just do it on set. Um, I pay her per hour, so okay. I'm not going to like miss my session just because I'm on TV. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you have to. I mean, you have goals. Exactly. To I just had oh, pasta I and now I do... Come on. Oh, my God, That's sorry. Come oh, on. sorry. Okay, you Love continue. Love you, Kyra. Keep me fit. Uh, right, Keep so while they do Keep the me... fitness... I want you to witness the news from around the Very world. Very nice. One of the fittest people that you'll ever meet. Here's Graham. What are you doing? This, oh, is it... Uh, no, it's like Zumba meets yoga. Like we just, like, do whatever we want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll skip that for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, from Kells, our Minister of Health and Wellness, we turn to our national news and the Minister of Agriculture in the Western Cape. In fact, that is where we start our bulletin this morning. Ivan Mayer is asking for urgent intervention to prevent more vets from immigrating from South Africa due to security issues and other problems. Now, he says the situation is exacerbated by the fact that South Africa is already experiencing a shortage of veterinarians. And the international norm is between 200 and 400 vets per million people. But South Africa only has between 60 and 70 per million. Also, veterinarians have been removed from a list of critical skills, making it more difficult for foreign veterinarians to obtain work visas as well. So clearly, focus and work needing in this area. Then, Statistics South Africa's quarterly labor force survey shows that some 169,000 more people found work in the fourth quarter of 2022, meaning that the official unemployment rate fell back to 32.7% from 32.9% in that previous quarter. A small step, but a very positive move. Now, the latest unemployment rate is the lowest since the first quarter of 2021. And figures further show that 28,000 more people were out of, work in the, out of work in the fourth quarter, bringing the official unemployment figure to 7.8 million. Still a horrifying statistic. And turning a wider gaze to the international news front, the United Nations now has announced that it's suspending humanitarian flights 
across much of the conflict-torn Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. That was after one of its own helicopters had come under attack. Now, unidentified militants fired on a UN helicopter in the North Kivu province. This was reported by the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. The 10 passengers and three crew members were unharmed, thankfully. The UN Office added that they were deeply concerned about the safety of helicopter flights, which attempted to reach the most vulnerable groups of the population with aid. Now, staying in the same vein, the World Food Programme, the WFP, says it requires some $450 million just to maintain its emergency food assistance to Syria, including to those in earthquake-affected areas, obviously. While the death toll across Turkey and Syria now exceeds 50,000 people, more than 8,500 perished in Syria alone, and thousands more were injured and displaced. Now, the WFP's chief, David Beasley, has described the scale of the devastation as truly incomprehensible. And he said some 12.1 million people are already food insecure in Syria, with an additional 3 million on the doorstep of hunger. Now we round off with a story that will inspire you. A boy with autism who was speechless, which means he couldn't read nor write until his late teens, is now the youngest ever black professor at London's world-famous Cambridge University. Wow. As a child, Jason R.A. grew up in a disadvantaged part of Clapham in London and was diagnosed with global developmental delay, which affected his ability to learn how to talk and read. Therapists even predicted he would spend his adult life requiring lifelong support. Well, R.A. finally learned to read and write in his late teens and then became a physical education, a PE teacher, after studying at England's Surrey University. Then he wanted to study and learn more. He studied by night while working as a PE teacher by day, eventually becoming an acclaimed professor with two master's degrees and a PhD in educational studies from Liverpool's John Moores University. Well, on Monday, he will join five other black professors at Cambridge, and he hopes to inspire people from underrepresented backgrounds to pursue higher education. Enough said. On that inspirational note, let's get you to work safely. What a lovely story, proof that anything is indeed possible, but same goes for the roads as well. Let's get you there. Now, Durban, KZN, start there. The tree that has fallen down on the M7 East, leaving Pine Town and heading towards the bluff, has been cleared. You can now continue along that route without any obstructions the way your day should be. Now, let's stay in KZN, Pine Town. There's congestion on the N3 going towards Durban uh, to Marion Hill Toll Plaza. Uh, you can expect heavy delays. And let's go to Cape Town. Brackenfell area, there has been an accident on the N1 inbound before the R300, close to Stellenberg Interchange. You can expect some delays, so just adjust travel time and do drive safely as we get on to some weather. Weather news and very, very important news if you are in the Nelson Mandela Bay area. Now, the Metro has issued a boil before drink notice to its water consumers as it's introducing boreholes sourced water into the reticulation system. The Metro says it's unable to meet the water quality standard blending ratio set out for blending water from multiple sources due to the low level of supply dams affecting abstraction rates and reservoir levels. Mayor Ratif Urendal said this was a precautionary measure. They've instructed public health officials to increase the daily testing of water and advising residents to boil tap water before consuming it. With the addition of unblended water in the articulation system, the water quality is constantly changing. Meanwhile, the Gauteng Health Department yesterday said tap water remains safe for drinking. Its message follows a viral audio clip making rounds on social media discouraging people from drinking tap water, alleging it is contaminated and may cause cholera. Department spokesperson Motala Tale Modiba said the audio clip was misleading and untrue. Now for our final sunrise update this morning, let's go to your sunrise pics in the Roomba Govinda. Uh, this is from Phoenix, uh, showing off a beautiful, pleasing view of the pink shades in the sky. Shante from Musenberg in Cape Town, enjoying a brisk walk on the beach, sharing this view of the clear skies and a lovely day ahead indeed. Jessica Winter, looking more like summer here in Somerset West, capturing a nature-inspired view of the sun blazing between the branches of the trees. And last up, we had another incredible video sent in by Prakash in Durban, showing off the birds flying around, enjoying the morning views and breeze. Absolutely phenomenal. And the thing is, it just shows you we accept videos too, not just stills. So if you want to send any of yours, please send it along to 
0800-222-8863. Save the number on your phone as Expresso, and we are ready to go and ready to connect with you as we get onto some temperatures as you start your day. Now, let's start off with uh, temperatures in Polokwane. 15 is the minimum there. 29 is the maximum. For Mbela, you can expect 18 as you wake up this morning. 30 degrees is the max. Pretoria, 15 up to 30. And then Johannesburg, you've got 13 on the cards. You rise to 27 this afternoon. Maya King, 18 to 32. Clarksop, 16 to 32 for you. Kimberley, 19 to 34. And Bloemfontein, you've got 31 as a maximum low of 15. Now let's go to Richards Bay. 20 is the lower temperature for you. You rise to 28. Some thunder showers expected around an 80% chance. Peter Maritzburg, same case with thunder showers. 55% chance though, 16 to 26. And then Durban, 21 to 27 degrees Celsius today. In Tata, you can expect 15 and you rise to 26 with an 84% chance of rain for you if it's not raining already. East London, 17 is your low to 26. Some rain expected in your area. Craddock, partly cloudy. 14 to 30. Aberha, you've got 17 to 24. Uh, George, 15 to 24 for you. And then the Mother City, 25 is the maximum from a minimum of 17. Worcester, uh, an equal minimum, 17 as well. 35 is how you max out. Sutherland, you've got 12 to 30. And then Uppington showing off once again. 20 is the low, uh, up to 39 degrees Celsius. So as always, stay in the shade, hydrate, and make sure you stick with us, your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And I can tell you there is a social media behind the scenes camera that you need to see right now because we've got some more action for you. Let's take a quick peek. Well, seeing as we're going behind the scenes, I'll give you a little background info. I love it when I get to cook with my favorite chefs. It feels like my own sorry, cooking sorry, show. Sorry. Are you not aware that I'm the new presenter? Uh, no, okay. Um, um. Any, also, mm -hmm. why didn't you call me after our date? Sorry, you look up. <laughs> I did. I this tried a few times, but you blocked really me. Really embarrassing. You blocked me on Instagram. And I, Just because okay. we met on Jewish Tinder. Anyway, <laughs> guys, after the break, we have the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. Ting, ting, ting. ting, ting. Call me. I don't want to do this again. It's my feel good show. Welcome back, you beauties. Get those aprons on, roll up those sleeves. Uh, one of my new favorite chefs, Strone Henry, is here making undoubtedly the most comfort, amazing food we have ever seen in this kitchen, and I love it. But of course, someone else has taken over my show today, so we can only invite her in to play her part. Coconut Kells, get in here. Um, Strone, you've met your match, baby. You've met your match. Strone? Coconut? Hi. <laughs> Please don't steal my phone. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. He does have a gangster vibe about yeah, him. Okay. It's very dangerous, but it's fine. Okay. Just like this burger. This burger must be handled with care. Okay. Okay. Which means those nails and this burger. Just like me, Graham. Exactly. Like... Okay. She bruises easily. Fine. Okay. My man. Okay. This is it. Yeah. I want to say this was the showstopper, but there's something else coming after this, which is even more mind-blowing. I hope so. But when you do a burger, bro, you got to do it. Very big, big, big burger. So this burger, we're trying to replicate a very famous takeaways burger. I won't okay. name names, <laughs> but I'm sure people can guess. Uh huh. Um, it's all about the sauce oh, wow. uh, on this one. Like, people love the sauce. The, the um, restaurant that I'm, I'm talking about started selling it separately, and it went, went crazy. So. Um, this is my take on, on, on this uh, famous burger. 
Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's go for it. Yeah. You're allowed to sell the sauce afterwards. I <laughs> will, but also, can we do the rest of the interview in English, please? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not... It's so sorry. <laughs> you got, he's going to get gangsta on I'm you in a second, eh? <laughs> or, Translations. I just cannot wait for this TV bite of this burger. Um, so, Strone, at its heart, it still has to be a good burger. 100%. It still has to be a beautiful yeah. burger patty. Gimmicks aside, you've got to nail that. So what is the key, in your experience, to the perfect burger patty? Um, I don't like anything mixed into my patties. Oh, wow. Uh, no spices, no sauces in the patty, just meat. Um, and the fat ratio has to be, like, above 20%. 20% and above. Okay. So you get the flavours of that. All right, so I'm not doing a thing today. Oh, same. <laughs> okay. No, no, Kels, it's your job you today. You see my okay? nails. Okay. Have you, have you had a job? Does Kels have a job? I, I used to work for this political party. It's a long story. They mm -hmm. also like separation of, you know, biggest races in the UK. Um, but yeah, I no longer have a job. I'm freelancing. <laughs> I think I've applied for a Minister of Electricity, so that's exciting. Okay. I'll let you know if I get and it. And health and wellness. And health and yeah, wellness as um, well. Yeah, very much so. Um, but I'm very excited for my whole line of health and wellness under the Ministry of Electricity. Uh, and we're ready for it. We're yeah. ready for it. Um, for the sauciest person on the planet, take us through the sauce that this saucy gal is going to have to make. So, uh, it's a mayo-based sauce. Uh -huh. um, again, pantry ingredients. Everybody should have these things at home. Exactly. A um, little bit of ketchup, a little bit of yellow mustard. Uh, the cheaper, the better on the mustard. We really like that flavour. Yes. Um, we've got a little condensed milk to sweeten things up. And then we've got some diced... Um, Pickled cucumbers. Oh, gherkins, great. And then a little bit of diced onion for a uh, bite. And some smoked paprika. Pretty simple. Is this my cue? Please. Okay. Yeah. First time right. cooking. Go, go, you'd be so proud. Go, go. <laughs> I do have a black go, it's a long story. <laughs> but I just pour everything. Everything together. Oh, and mix. my goodness. <laughs> like Mandela wanted. Mix everything together. Just in one melting Rainbow pot. Nation, one melting pot. Ebony and ivory in this but place. You, we've got like the, I've been like the token white since I started in TV. Okay. Remember? Okay. This guy used to be so he was black on the inside, white on the outside. I'm the opposite. There is a term for that, but you're not no, allowed to say that. No, we're not allowed to say it, Graham. Oh my God. And I, I proudly <laughs> own got... that. Were you alive during the Simonia days? Do you remember? And that? I was oh, born man. in 2001. Um, so no. no. But I've seen my my aunt's VHSs. <laughs> And you used to say, oh, Simone, yeah. and I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God, who's that guy? No, who's that guy? And he needs to come back to himself because I, I like the more Caucasian. OK. Program. I don't know if I can do it, eh? That, well, you've been that way. You I'll know, keep... you've come to the show and then you started speaking better, so that's yeah, why no, we, we went we, on we that try. page. It's who you surround yourself yeah. with. That looks spectacular, Strone. But how are we looking from a visual aspect? Doesn't that look close to the, the sauce, sauce we all know? That sauce. That, that sauce. 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 <laughs> I want to taste the sauce. Can I dip a little... You can dip in my sauce anytime, Graham. <laughs> Stop it, I told you. That door is closed, babe. <laughs> that, that, I, I keep saying I'm married, but that seems to just fuel the fire uh, anymore, Everybody's married on. in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's delicious. Okay, I'm going to taste my own sauce because... Girl. I'm going to bottle this and sell this. Mm -hmm. What would you call it? Oh, my God. I, I want to give it, like... Mm. Okay, it's the coconut <laughs> smith. The coconut yeah. Lovely. sauce. I'm so excited for this. Cool, we We've got a burger. We've got a sauce. Let's put it together. How let's build. do we... Hey? Uh, let's build. Um... Let's build. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Now, um, everyone does this differently. And, it, and again, it says, like the chicken wing, 100%. how you approach your burger. This is like a, a, a lesson in personality type. So how do you do it? So personally, style. personally anything like onions, lettuce and tomato mm -hmm. belong under the patty. Yeah. Get on there. They aren't, th those are garnishes, not toppings. Okay. And then we've got things like onion rings, pickles, and those are toppings. Those belong okay. on top of the patty. It's a garnish versus topping. That's Just been said. schooled, okay? Just been schooled. Um, the sauce, do we want a sauce on the bottom? We can do sauce this? bottom and top. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna, sorry, excuse me, I'm gonna do it. Can you sauce me up, lady? <sighs> sauce my, my buns, God. please. <laughs> Graham, <laughs> my buns. that wife now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, she's, she's fast asleep, but still texting right now. She's like, her hand <laughs> is angry with me right now and just texting, saying, what are you doing? Do you know, there's Perfect. actually a stembu in this country. Um, I don't know if you know <laughs> it. I learned it in Zulu class. Okay. I think we should do them for Caucasians. Be the first Caucasians to do the stembu. Please, please, please. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Um, okay, so that and onions underneath? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Look at for, me guiding. Thanks, thanks for <laughs> confirming that for me. <laughs>
Chef Kells, I appreciate <laughs> no, it. Um, and the tomato under, hey? Yes, please. Okay, and beautifully cut. You cut those I, perfectly, Thank love. you so much, my doll. I love it. She just looked at the onion and it just fell into those right oh. pieces. I'm going to do two of these. Um, Perfect. And now the burger, something. right? Okay. Now the two patties, nothing ever between the patties, yeah. please. Okay, nothing, nothing that makes for a very slidey burger. Nothing between us. Nothing must come between okay. our patties. Okay, I'm sorry, if you guys are not seeing it, because Graham is... <laughs> Okay. It's actually not me anymore. <laughs> I'm getting hot here. Was there spice in this burger or something? <laughs> Was there a little bit of... It's just me. Do you keep um, some of that sriracha in the sauce there? On the top or? and then we've got some pickles on the top. Okay. Give my patties a little pat. Okay, so we put it to our unbelievably creative viewers who are amazing, like all copywriters, okay? If they could be a fast food joint, a chain, mm -hmm. what that would be called. Yeah. So if you could be a fast food joint. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. well, I am a fast food joint. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd be called the Graham. The Graham, You know, course. I open 24-7. <laughs> so. And really, really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> You're a nonsense. <laughs> oh, Strode, how often do you have to make these for your friends, Guy? I don't have many friends, but, but I make it for my, my family. <laughs> we, make, oh, we do a burger night at least once, once a week. At, and what uh, do you have to do, like when you say this, this circle of friends, like how, how far does that extend, man? Not very far. Oh, my okay. arms are man. <laughs> See, man. Paul's more's not far, so we get it. Um, yeah, I've been flirting with him the whole morning to try and get in his kitchen, and now you've come and you've just put this wedge The way you can be, become friends with me is if you cook for me. Oh, ah. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make you a little sub. We'll invite okay. you over Love for Friday. I'm going to make you a sub. Now, I'm joking Friday about dinner. this not being the showstopper. We are going to make a meatball sub that is going to blow you away. Almost as much as seeing Kels eat this burger right now. <sighs> Um, and please, if we can get a soundtrack befitting this moment of television history. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, that's what she said. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Graham. We are always open. No matter how big your appetite, our name might be a mouthful. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, man. If you want to get your hands, not on the coconut, <laughs> but on this burger, go to expressoshow.com. Oh, we'll see you now. Sensodyne repair and protect with deep repair. The science is pretty amazing. It really goes deep and repairs tooth sensitivity. The science is there. It's going to improve their quality of life in a big way. This is the first thing I recommend.
your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3 and stained glass projects are inspiring and fun and the words stained glass immediately it conjures up images of cathedrals, churches, mosques but not with our next guest. Now the words style and creativity come to play. Louise Jane is a master artist and craftsman or should I say craftswoman and she's joining us today to tell us more about the world of stained glass art it's so great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I have to say, I have a love for stained glass art. I've got some in my apartment at the moment. Even though there's no color to it, it is such a beautiful and rare art. Because if you know, if one of the glasses break, you don't always find someone that can fix or replace it. But Louise, just to get a little bit more of an understanding of where your love for this art came from, who's, who's been your biggest inspiration and how long have you been doing this? So my biggest inspiration was actually my grandmother. She had a stained glass business for 25 years and I've been now doing stained glass for 12 years and everything I know I learned from my grandmother. And how old were you when you got to create your first piece with your grandma? Um, about 21. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she didn't let you into the workshop too young. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to um, glass stain work, and I know it's quite there's quite a delicate process to it. For those who have it or are interested in it, how do you take care of your your glass art? Um, I, you know, it's not that difficult to look after it. Um, obviously, it does need cleaning. Um, every now and then, it, it does obviously need re at some stage. Um, but there's normally about a 20-year lifespan on it. So it's more just keeping an eye on it. Obviously, don't let the door slam. Don't let the door um, slam, yes. That's yes. Uh, Cape Town wind. That uh, definitely uh, helps me a lot. Um, but, yeah, you just it's relatively easy to look after it. I love what you've also brought along for us. Let's talk through, because we... A little bit later we'll be doing a little demonstration where you give us a glimpse of how you put your beautiful art pieces together but talk to me about this beautiful lamp that I'm seeing so this is what we call a fan lamp um, the, obviously the beautiful base um, all imported but obviously the lamp was made locally um, this is the copper foil method, and then I also do the traditional lead work. Okay, so what is the difference between the copper foil and the traditional lead? So the traditional lead is how your, um, your church windows are made, so with lead came. This is just made with a copper foil. Okay. And then soldered together. And then you do it all together. Yes. And talk to me about these little pieces here, because there's... This is something I suppose you can hang yes. in front of the so window. Yes, so those you can just hang in front of the window. Um, those are what I do in my one-on-one -on -one workshops. Then they also make a little sun capture like that. Ah, oh, this is so adorable. I can just picture someone that is obsessed with butterflies, um, someone that is, you know, wants some something different yes. to just catch the light and get the colors into the room is absolutely incredible. Now, for someone that is interested in doing a workshop with you, they want to, they, they're fascinated with glass stain artwork. Where can they get in touch with you? Do you offer lessons? I do, yes. So I've also been teaching for 12 years. So I do one-on-one -on -one classes which is making a sun catcher and then I also do full-time courses which is starting from your basics right up until making Tiffany lamps. Okay yeah. well listen I have a very important question to ask you what is your favorite design that you've made? So my favorite designs is abstract. Abstract. Uh, yes anything with random circles, swirls that's my my favorite designs. Okay, okay. So anything abstract, remember yes. that anything abstract is your favorite designs. Now, we did tease there's going to be a little bit of a demo coming up. Can you tell me what we'll be making? Um, so we're just going to make a little sun catcher. Um, I'm going to show you how to cut, grind, and then copper foil, and hopefully get to the soldering. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. And is this quite a long process? Like, how long would it take you to make this butterfly? Uh, someone like me that's with experience is a little bit quicker um, but I the class normally runs about three hours and then okay. you, can, you actually finish something in, within that time oh fantastic well Louise is not going anywhere stay tuned because we also have something fun and exciting for you and this is in the world of stained glass art but that's not all we have a competition going and that's thanks to Louise Jane's funky art glass 
workroom. That is a tongue twister. <laughs> Louise Jane's funky art glass room. And it, what I'm gonna do is, during the interview, Louise Jane mentioned her favorite paint design. Now, if you know the answer, head on over to our Facebook. I think I repeated it a few times. And tell us the answer, and who knows, you could be the lucky winner of a one-on-one -on -one workshop with Louise. And if you wanna get more information about the workshops that she offers, her handle is on your screen right now. You can contact her there. And of course, stay tuned, we've got a demo that we're gonna be getting into. Sounds exciting and abstract. <clears throat> anyway, right, so we've got Jordan Tui here. Um, as you can see, the dress has been stained glass designed. You can see that, that's fantastic. But I mean, abstract. we've been learning about the, the journey yeah. and how, how amazing you are. Thanks. Also, this Abby Cookson has Abby been Cookson, phenomenal. Everybody. Abby Cookson, look here, you've been incredible today. Oh, I must mention, I always love the bands. I love the bands. But <laughs> for you, this year, 2023, what can we expect? 2023, if this is the year, I'm very excited yes. to release my EP eventually by the end of this year. Your okay. EP? My EP. Is it coming out? It's coming yes. out. EP one. Okay. Um, and also, I am selling merchandise for the first time ever. You're selling merch? Yes. Are you selling CDs outside the studio? I wish it Hopefully. was that cool, but okay. it's t-shirts <laughs> with the lyrics of lies and truth. Oh. And the best part is that 40% of the proceeds are going to the girls that I mentor, like the girls that I mentioned and yes. other girls that I teach like creative arts at um, a school in Hanover Park. Wow. And then the other, you know, percentage will go towards making more music. So that's why I'm selling, not just to, you know. And also, I would really like people to wear the lyrics wherever they go, because it's right. such, such cool lyrics, like, I think. Like, the, I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's fantastic lyrics. Yeah. In fact, give me, like, one T-shirt that you'd make me with what, what set of lyrics would you put on there? On your T-shirt? Yeah, on my T-shirt. Which, which set? Like, give me a line. Uh, yeah. Your vulnerability will be the key to your healing. I'm actually impacted, like, just emotionally by that. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm going to let you do your thing now because it's so important. Thanks. And for all of the things that you're going to go into this year, I just want to say a little prayer for you and say wow. all the best. Um, your next song is... Um... I say a little oh, prayer. Oh, I thought so. I say a little prayer from Aretha Franklin. It's like I knew it, but I didn't. This is Jordan Tui and, of course, Abby Cookson, just for you.
together, together, that's how it must be to live without you. to that song. That's how inspired I was. Jordan Tweet, can I tell you, there are so many things I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to your lyrics on, on a different apparel, buying all of those things, and also your inspiring message behind your music. Also to the incredible Abby Cookson. Whew, what a I talent, eh? Yeah. What a talent, Abby. I'm just saying, I love the band. <laughs> Jordan Tui, make sure that you just, you know, focus on this. And also there's a certain interview on Good Hope FM, a little bit later, which is fantastic. Could you play me a little jam there, you know? Because I think it would be great. Just to kind of take us to break. Same vibe, yes. That's it. Oh, there we go. Yes. That's it. Oh, that's it. We should sing it through, yeah. Ah, oh, express so. Oh, express. Zanzia, welcome to the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to stop trying to speak Italian now, but you don't have to stop being Italian. Why settle for takeaways if you can make your own fakeaways? Yeah, now load shedding seems to be happening at the most inappropriate times, making it difficult to prepare dinner at home. Well, luckily, we've got a chef in the building. It is the one and only Chef Gil! Look, look, I'm in a rush. I'm not here for a very long time, which is yes. why I'm doing this recipe today, because you can have it done in like 15, 20 minutes. All right, so let me paint the scenario, because this has literally happened to me. I come home, oh damn, 30 minutes time, load shedding's about mm -hmm. to go down, mm -hmm. I'm hungry, Yes. I need to feed the people, what do I do? First of all, you call me, and okay. I'm gonna let you know. Okay, come through, Willies man. are coming through, it's Wednesday, which means not only are you gonna feed the people, you're gonna keep the feed in your wallet, because every Wednesday we know this, W Rewards members, yeah. buy three pizzas, and the third one is on us. Oh, wow, okay, nice. It's for you, it's for you. Nice, say no more. Every Wednesday is now officially pizza night. Pizza, pizza, pizza. pizza. <laughs> Apparently I asked behind the scenes, what's pizza in Afrikaans? Everybody said pizza. Oh, well, I don't that, know. <laughs> Maybe what you can let you? us know, Zanzi, how do you pronounce pizza? <laughs> so we put how are we the, doing this? Yeah, we put man. in the pizzazz into pizza night, okay. and it's super simple because Woolies have done 90% of the work for us. Thank you. But here's the thing, right? Okay, first let me tell you about my three picks for the day. Okay. The caprese pizza, the Ooh. barbecue chicken pizza, Ooh. and then the mini cheese and tomato pizzas, perfect for the air fryer, perfect for the lunchbox. You know the and suggestion- And make some extras that I can take for oh, the next day as well. Absolutely. Slide it in the lunchbox. You know yes. that suggestion box at the office? Yes. Okay, you need to be putting in there, please get an air fryer for the office. Because uh, this is what this is made for. So uh, get Let me this. just write that out so long quickly. There we go. There we go. Fresh out the oven, <laughs> slice it up, eat it. That's how you want it. That's why these rule when it comes to that. And so that's first pretty thing, much as Italian as it gets, right? Because, right? I mean, you don't get anything other than fresh everything. Fresh ingredients, fresh, pit, fresh pizza, you name it. This is the experience we're getting. And you said in 15 minutes. Look, you can whack that, oven, whack that oven up 200, get it going. Okay. Which means you can make quite a few pizzas when that, you get that notification that says 55 minutes to go. You can make quite a few pizzas. There's a lot of 15 minutes. There's a lot of 15 minutes. minutes. Like Don't that. ask us to do quick maths. <laughs> there's like but there's a lot. Four ish. Someone out there like that. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay, cool. Favorite thing about the Caprese pizza? Oh, wait, comes... they even. Oh my gosh, even have the drizzle right? and the sauce. Come the on. other thing is your pizza 
needs to have that stone crust at the bottom, the bit of char, that's the signature flavor. Wait, are you telling me I can still get that in this? Not only does it have no. the color, but if you zoom in, you can actually see the little speckles of char on there oh, already. Come on, you and that's the it. flavor that you want. So all Thank you're gonna you. do is, here's a tip that I do at do home. Do I have to do anything, actually? No, you like need to, to just anything. watch me. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna cook it on a, a sheet pan, perfectly okay. fine. Yeah. What I do is don't do the inside, because then you're gonna struggle to get it out. Do it on uh -huh. the underside. Okay. Pizza paddle, okay, love this thing. Great for pizzas, of course, but also to transfer cake. Office okay. baking yes, tin yes, onto the yes. serving pan. So, this is really great. Get it on there. Feel like a profesh. <laughs> oh, you wanna do this? Okay, what you gotta do is you gotta do a slight jerk forward, flip with the wrist, pull back, that the pizza stays exactly there, but the paddle's in your hand. Whoa, okay. Do it. I got do you, it. coach. All right, let's try this out. We do this Italian style, so a quick little flick in the wrist. Okay, guys, watch out there. Watch out. <laughs> yeah! Have a dent, Did you do it with your other hand like this? <laughs> oh, I didn't have the <laughs> Right. Oh, this is cool, this is fun, man. And literally, this is also all happening in under 50 minutes, oh, by sure. the way. So how cool is this to have a little bit of an experience while making food, and apparently in a rush, it doesn't feel like that anymore. No, not this at all. awesome. Not at all. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. Can I show you two amazing ways to slice your pizza? Can you please, I've got it. I've got yes. it. Okay. Two unique ways to slice your pizza, okay? This one's called the chef's kiss. You've done the work. Well, Willie's yeah. happened. You've done the, the preparation I for pretended it. to do all the work, yeah. You deserve, a, you deserve a little bit of pizza. So what you do is, ah, you get your pizza slicer. Of course. Okay? You gotta go through. Just work with me, yeah? Work yeah, with me, okay? Yeah, okay, I see you. Okay. Standard cut, yeah, I got you. Standard cut, ah, what ha what's happening? What's he doing? Okay, okay, yeah, it's no longer okay. Are you sure that was the right way? This is yours, Raul de Mornay, because you've done the work. This is called the chef's kiss. No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. That is naughty. No one knows. Okay, that's yours because you've done the work. Oh, There's wow. one more. There's one more slice. Well played, well played. One more played. slice and it's called the big, the big baller slice, okay? I mean, mm. look how perfect around that is. Can you pass can me I, the pizza? Can I, sorry, just take a moment to actually huh? talk about how good this is. Because it's the best of the We have not pizza. mentioned anything about the flavor or anything on this, but wow. I feel like I'm in Italy again. Thank you. You are. Thank you for my return you are. flight. I appreciate that, Woolies. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> one more slice. This is called the big baller mm. slice. My favorite. Can you pass that um, caprese at the end there? Oh, man, this looks so good. So, mm -hmm. you, you've seen the chef's kiss, the, the slice of pizza you deserve because you've done mm. the work. This is the big baller slice. And you gotta, ah, mm. gotta be, okay. We got that, but that's okay. The big baller slice is the slice you deserve. Okay, work with me, work with me. Whoa, okay, okay, okay. How are we doing this? I'm so confused right now. That's your slice. How's anyone gonna not notice this? It's not about them noticing it. They must <laughs> notice that you deserve this. You deserve this. And then this I one. Absolutely love it. I mean, this one, you just slice up into little mini, mini little slices. Nice. You know what you want to talking about. Nice. But you deserve this, Ralph. I like that. I like that. And then the rest of the family can share that. Right. That is how it's done. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Of course, Mzanzi, you need to make sure that every Wednesday you get in on this incredible action. Every Wednesday, an opportunity to go straight to Italy and enjoy all this magic. Pizza nights are never going to be better than when you incorporate this. So W Rewards, that's Woolworths Rewards members, they are in for a treat. Supper is sorted every Wednesday. So you can buy three Woolworths pizzas and you get the cheapest one free on the house. Now this offer is only available in store. So for you, Mzanzi, it's slice, slice, baby. Boom, boom, bada, boom, bada, boom, boom. Hey, where's that slice you promised me? Yeah, enjoy your fakeaways, people. Mmm. <laughs> nice. I hope you're gonna save me a slice. That is a giant slice. But we are now back with the skilled artist, Louise Jane, and she will be demonstrating to us how she comes up with one of her spectacular designs. And Louise Jane, she does use glass stain art, which is fantastic. Now, Louise, you've got your different panels of glass. Yes. And obviously, this is very delicate. Now, you've taken a piece and you've drawn out your design. The design, yes. So now I'm about to use my glass cutter. Um, the little cutter is in the middle there, and we're literally going to push down ah, and look cut at the that. glass. Okay, now it's obviously going straight is probably much easier than doing the curves. A little bit, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, obviously the, the straight lines are easier to do, but um, you can't do a full circle, so we will you just do it. Yes, so we'll just bits. do it bit by bit. 
And uh, how often have you cut your fingers? Uh, into I was wondering if that was coming. I actually cut myself the other day. <laughs> so I'm actually hoping I don't do it right now. <laughs> so yeah, so there's your first piece that is cut. And now you obviously want to shape it and make yes. it smooth. Yes. So obviously this can still obviously cut your fingers and then when we do the next process of the copper foil, um, the copper foil won't stick until okay. we do this. So now we're just gonna... So you use the normal machine just to smooth it yes. out the edges. Yeah, so it's just to smooth it out, get rid of any kinks that's in it. Now, if someone is ordering glass stained panels for their home, yes. windows, yes. Is this something that you come to install ready-made, pre-made, or do you make everything on site? No, everything's made in my studio. Um, I obviously go into uh, measurements, and then I install it as it's, it's complete, yeah. So, we're just gonna finish this. Okay. Amazing. So then the next step is to do the cup foil, which has got like a a little bit of copper. A little bit of sticky back to it. Oh, and you just wrap it around. Oh, if it's going to work today. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, we, like luckily we already have some done. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we wrap this all the way around. And what is the, the, the purpose of the copper foil there? So this is how your next piece um, will stick together. Okay. Um, so when we put the flux on, it solders together and it holds it fantastic so it's obviously not very neat but you but do that neatly and it will look yes like and that. it will look like this then what we do is put the two pieces together we take some flux and that's just the the flux oil uh, yes that's to make the copper and solder stick and and now this is where the magic comes where you simply oh look at that and there this is so fascinating to watch. <laughs> actually, you my wrong hand here. Yeah? <laughs> is that actually your, are you dominant with your I'm left, left hand? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so obviously we would then finish it, go all the way around, but that, and then we obviously solder. On the back The back as well. as well, yes. Oh, fantastic. So you are using, how do you get it black like this? So um, it's called a patina, um, which you actually, um, once this is done, we wash it, and then we use, it's actually blue, and it actually turns the silver black. Ah. And that's how we get the patina. That is absolutely fantastic. So of course, if someone comes to you for one of the classes that you offer, the class is about three hours long, yes. and they'll learn all of these techniques. Yes. And they'll be able to walk away with a beautiful little something that they've made. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Well, don't forget that if you want to win yourself one of these stained glass workshops with Louise, all you have to do is head on over to our social media pages and tell us what design would you like to make? Now, also, you stand a chance to win yourself a one-on-one -on -one workshop with Louise Jane, and this competition will close today at 2 p.m. There are T's and C's that can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. And Louise, I just want to say thank you once again for coming and showing us this beautiful craft and art that you've created. And this one has to be by far my favorite. It's just a little glass dome. With a crystal inside. Can you just imagine putting this by your window and having the light catch and that just reflecting all over the floor, the walls, all over? It literally over. shoots rainbows everywhere. It will <laughs> shoot rainbows. There we go. Well, Louise, Jane, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. What an incredible day. <laughs>
Uh, we are back for our last installment of the Culinary Hotline. And we really have been making the ultimate fake-away recipes. And earlier we made some sticky wings that were just crazy. And we made them in the air fryer and they were great. And the ultimate, and I'm going to call it the ultimate cheeseburger. But we saved the best for last. I promised you the crescendo, the showstopper. It's a saucy meatball sub. And I, I call them one of my favorite chefs. Stroh Henry is now my favorite chef. Boom, done. Love it. Okay, and he is going to be doing something today. It's simple, but it's mind blowing. This is going to be great. Also, there's a chef Clem that he said the same thing uh -huh. too. So I'm just letting you know that there's a bit I of do. a. I do, no, no, but I mean uh, it to you. Okay. I actually mean it to you. Oh, I'm the top Clem. <laughs> I'm the top Clem. <laughs> so how do we get this this going, Stroh? So we start with the meatball. Again, it's the purest, hey, the meat. Yeah. Every, everything meat comes down to the meat. Are, are, like, everybody's got their own thing. Mm -hmm. Some people's meatballs turn out to be like just round fricadels. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> others like adding that parmesan into that hard cheese into I'm, the meatball. I'm What's your vibe? I love uh, extra flavors in my meatballs, like completely opposite of the burger patties. The burger patty. Okay. Um, so we want some binder, which is our egg and our bread crumb. That's just going to keep the meatball together, it's not going to break apart. Nice. Um, and then, again, some onion for some bite. You can go in with fresh herbs, garlic, um, the world's really your oyster when yeah. it comes and to the meatball. you can express yourself through yes. the meatballs. You know, you want to be able to do that. So, are we getting it now? This, I'm starting to feel the gangster element here. <laughs> <laughs> what is the gangster? I am, and I'm like the least gangster guy on the planet. And I try, man, I try to be hardcore, but I just don't have it. I don't what? think I'm very gangster myself, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> the food. The coarse gangster, bro. Exactly. That's, the, that's the vibe. So for me, a co you are a coarse gangster if you ever intimidate, intimidated one of your younger cousins <laughs> to fetch you food at the family function. That, that's what a course gangster used to like me. That's like every family function. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's always that, but there's always an uncle that does that. An uncle will turn you into like that person. Yeah. So he's, he's the course gangster of the, the family. Yes. So you get the drunkle and the course gangster overlap. Okay? Oh, oh, that yes. often happens. And that's yes, because the drunk will send you to get the drink. The <laughs> course gangster exactly. sends you to get the food. There's a good balance there. 100%. All right, so that's all bad and, and nice as well. Uh, that, that meatball recipe is, is super simple. You know, Very so, easy. Sometimes, you know what I do? I like I add I add parmesan into that yep. thing because mm. there's something about it like the way the melting point hits it and ugh. yeah, and it's, it's just a, gives it a deeper flavor. You know I was going mean? to say it's a layer of flavor that continues right the way through because we do have che cheese on the final product, but the yeah. mozzarella is not the most flavorful cheese for sure. Yeah. Um, so a parmesan or something like that in the meatball really does help with the overall flavor of the dish. Okay. Um, um, what's the right kind of consistency here, if it's a little bit too wet, how do you dry it? What, what are you aiming so for? So you're trying to actually um, kind of emulsify the meat a little bit. So you're trying to work the sausage, I um, mean, ah. the fat into the... Sure, so you actually, you're giving it quite a working yeah. over. Ooh, um, yes. You want it close to uh, sausage consistency, basically. Okay. And um, so if it's, great, eh? yeah, if it's too wet, you do a little more uh, breadcrumbs. Um, too dry, you add maybe more egg. It's, uh, yeah, you can really play it, but yeah. Hit and miss, man, hit and miss. But you start to get Ooh. a sense of what you like. Exactly. Nice liberal dollop of oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want uh, nice oil so that we can get good sear on the meatballs. Oh, Everything's basically done in one pan. Because I suppose the joy here, if you're working with a good meat and you've got the lovely, uh, for me, the cooking is just about rendering the fat ready. True. So, you know, it doesn't need to, you don't have to sacrifice the quality of the meat for the flavor. And I suppose like a red meat, you want this here, you want yeah. to see it in the flavor, yeah? Um, what a lot of people do, what I also do personally, yeah. is I like a mixture between beef and pork in okay. my meatballs. Um, if you've got pork in your meatball, you do want to cook it all the way through, but if it's beef, just beef like this, you can get a nice hard sear on the outside and you want a little bit of pink in the middle of the meatball. Just a little bit of that, yeah, man. I mean, I eat steak tartare, so I'm not yeah, shy yeah. of a little bit of pink, but I, I, I do love the, the idea of developing flavors, and especially with the simpler, where there's less room to hide. Yeah, yeah you, well, it's, it's a few ingredients, so everything, every step of the way you need to do the right thing. I, I need to ask you this, all right? Two questions. Number one is, in this version, how do you know it's ready? How do you know you're ready to go? Because, I mean, color. obviously you can't see in the middle. Color and small. Okay, color okay. and small. And also, you, you feel it if it's tightened up. Okay. That's, that's when you know it's... a little patch, is that? Yeah. And, then, and ah. then my second one is, do you think you can do it in air fry? Because, I mean, that's 100%. like a big conversation. Ah, okay. So can this, you do that? Yeah, 100%. The, oh, wow. this, this recipe... Uh, it's focused on the pan mainly, but uh, the meatballs can be done separately and then you can make your sauce in, in oh, the pan. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. But s searing the meatball in the pan and using the same pan to make the sauce also adds another layer of 
flavor, flavor to the completely final product. And I mean, true. I love that. You know, some people are sort of phobic to red meat, mm. and I mean, you also get the sort of the white meat minces as well. Do you think it will work the same? Uh, in the same. It, it won't be the same, but definitely you, you, not. It's not gangster, bro. Yeah. Is, is it not, <laughs> not gangster, gangster with the white meat? No, ain't I'm, gangster, I'm bro. actually speaking on behalf of. You know, sometimes the red meat is not going to be there, and they're like, yeah. hey, do it this way. And I just because I know you get the chicken mince. You know, it's gonna, you it's, gonna, well. it's gonna produce a drier uh, okay. end product, but it, it, it will work, it just won't be exactly the same. It won't be the same, okay. So at least you can try. The challenge, man, if you can do it differently, 100%. do it better, do okay. it then, okay? And don't, don't be a coarse gangster and send someone else to go and do it for you. Snappy. So do that, you see that? that color is what we're Ooh. looking for on both sides. I hear you. Um, so we take it out of the, out of the pan. Because this obviously then it gives it a bit of uh, substance, a bit of backbone, yeah. so it's going to hold its structure. So obviously the meatballs aren't done cooking. Fully, okay. but yeah, we get the vibe. But we're starting the sauce uh, in the pan. And in the same pan, because you want to get all of that flavor from 100%. the meatballs. Because you've got oh, all the fats man. from the meat yeah. in there. Exactly. So you just give your garlic a little bit of color. You don't want to burn it. Um, they say there are two, two ways of making a good tomato-based sauce. Okay. okay. Uh, it's either you Cook it for a really long time, like two to four hours. Okay. Or you cook it for a short time, but next two to five minutes. Okay. And I feel like this is the version because I can see yeah, that exactly. the fan is. Well, it's the going. TV version, baby. So that's that's how we do it. But I suppose you kind of want a bit of caramelization going yeah. on in there. There's lots of sugars in the exactly. Yeah, you know, the, the so tomato and the, the garlic. So the theory with the short version is you cooking it short quickly. Um, yeah. Is preserving the natural sweetness of the tomato. Boom. And then the oh, long, right. the long way is amplifying the sweetness. Sure. So you're going to end up with a much sweeter product if you cook it for longer and um, caramelize all the sugars yeah, in the tomato. I, 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 speaking of the air fryer, I've been doing that like to make yeah. my kids' pasta. It's just a few tomatoes, a few onion, a bit of garlic in the air fryer, yes. and just roast it off for 20 yes. minutes, blend it. Boom, absolutely and, beautiful. And they get all their veggies in, and it's super healthy, but then also all those flavors are going in as well. That's that's brilliant. So the meatballs are just finished off in the sauce. In the sauce. Oh, yeah. And then we can build. Okay, okay so how do so we build? Building, building, building. All right, so <laughs> we got about two minutes to get this build right. Okay. Strone, Bob you are the course guy. gangster, so you need to just, like, you know, so put us this, on the force. The point <laughs> of the sandwich is we want all of the layers to become one. So how you build it is completely up to you. Everything should like melt together and, and, and smudge together. So how you build it is up to you. Let's go, let's so go central I, with this then. I'm thinking then we've got what to start with, with a bit of sauce and meatball, right? So you want that sauce to just absorb and melt okay. into, exactly. the, into the, the roll, hey? What do you think? Oh, I, I completely agree. Okay, so, so you can put that on too, because obviously we're going to get a bit of melt on it as well. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the mozzarella. Okay, so what do, we, what do you reckon? Should we start? With our meatballs. I think the way you're doing it is the right way. I think that's the great thing about having recipes, fake away recipes, that you are. You are I mean, Stone, do you agree with me? Like, wow. everybody's going to have their own way. They're going to look at you, and sometimes they get a bit judgy, and they're like, oh, why are you doing meatballs like this? But your way is the right way. But that's the funny thing. So I'll, with every takeaway, there's a little. I'm always like, oh, please, can you take this out and put some of that in? Okay, I oh, do that every those time. Yeah, I, mean, oh, I, am, okay. I make fast food slow. Okay, yeah. I'm the slow food <laughs> kind of a guy. So I bet you there are people like, oh, please, just make it at home, bro. Um, but this way, you can do it. You can put a little bit more, can put a and little bit less. Oh. Yeah, for me, um, making stuff at home is it's always going to oh, be better word. because you are yeah. in control of the ingredients you're using. Oh, just, you Get know that what? sauce on there. Get just that like, sauce on there. Just... And then we've got a yeah. absolutely beautiful. And I like the introduction of a little bit of the basil pesto. Yeah, I'm, just for some fresh basil pesto. Oh, that's nice. And then you've got also the continuation of the hard cheese. Yes. Peppers. You've got, wow, this is like mozzarella. Very, very Italian. And then we're going to pop these guys on there. Yeah. That's, see, this is where we're going. Oh. And that melting point of the mozzarella is going to cover the, the, the meatballs. I'm, I'm, I'm salivating. I'm ready. So absolutely. from there we go into the oven yeah. under the broiler. Two minutes. You want to see down. a little bit of color on your cheese, lots of melting, and ready to come on. Dude, cool. Stone. We love you, guys. Thank you so much for bringing Great your Thank you guys very well. clear love of what you do to our kitchen. Appreciate it. That was fantastic. Ah, oh, gentlemen, listen, this has been such a fun show. Carlos, it's been good having you here. How was it being on Expresso Set? Oh, well, especially on a fatty Simone's Wednesday, it's been uh, child delicious. Uh -huh. um, but I also want to compliment you because you speak so well. I know people don't expect it from, uh, 
but you speak very well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Listen, let's get the gentleman in here to come and join us. I feel like you need to be surrounded by good looking men. I do, yes. and Graham specifically needs to remember his place. Oh, here we go, Dale. Oh. And, and it's sort of Claire Boisty joins you. Uh, yes. Um, oh, thank you. Oh. Can I join you? You it's can. Fine. Hi. I understand Hi. how exciting and conflicted this makes <laughs> me feel right now. Why did you put right yeah, why, why I'm did just, you I'm first? nervous around you people, I won't lie. Um, and also because I thought this was a me and Graham moment and it feels like... I could, oh, I could, I could, I could move to that. I'm going to move to that chair. Sorry, I'm going to just I'm going to move to this chair here. You guys have your own... Oh, has this couch always been this comfortable? Like, yes. I'm just... Oh my goodness. Relax a little bit in No, I feel like a fourth wheel. No, no, I'm right here. You like the trailer. You know, that's fine. We're just double date now. But I know Carl is intimidating good looking okay is this oh, whoa <laughs> hey has the yeah. seed not been it. planted so so wait i need to ask this question Carl. Yeah. you mentioned you only eat pasta or yes. carbs between yes. what time of the day between 12 and 2 okay. um but i mean why, also, why, I mean, why is that just because that's when you don't gain weight uh, it's like a thing it's like a free yeah, it's like a free free time. Time. Thing we show to, between 12 and, and 2. no but okay. you haven't heard about the new thing there's actually a new thing uh, where you, if you eat earlier, mm. there's less calories in the... In fact, let's bring in some pasta. I feel like and if you eat yeah. standing, yeah. It, the calories don't count. There we go. They don't. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Thank wow. you so much, doll. She, um, she Thank tells, you. if you come and visit us, we get food... Delivered. Delivered. But I mean, this is like my house. Like I, I do get food here. delivered at home. You know. Yeah, you know. Um, he does. He does breakfast in bed, Graham. So yeah. I'm used to the food delivery. Are oh, you going to feed me? Oh, okay. my gosh. Get a room. We're out of here. Have a oh, great morning. Hello. <laughs> to get to the heart of how you feel, all you need is love and a dish that no one cooks better than you. Made with love by Clover. Uh, never feel 